Hello, guys. Holy smokies. You are uh, showering me in love this morning. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of the bits, the resubs, everything just showing up. That's what I look forward to every week. Sammy just went quickly to the post office, but yeah, we're ready to get into it. So welcome in guys. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully everyone's had a good week so far. Lazy, top of the morning. Hello, JK. Okay, what we got going in here? Let me just quickly catch up here. Holy, obviously bonk. Oh, actually we had Orca first today. Good job, Orca. And then we got a bonk and everyone's still riding with feta. We didn't get any feta this week. <laughs> We didn't go to Costco, so no feta still. I know we're dying. So Rook, thank you so much for the 30 months in a row. Holy. Rook was the one guy who first came in. I'll never forget this. Just rolls into stream one day randomly. Hey, you should do this and this to fix your audio so you don't look like a mime. And it totally fixed it. And ever since then, we welcome Rook in all the time. So hope you and Pendleton are doing good. That's his little doggo, so cute. And then we got Bonk with the 16 months in a row. Thank you for your services, Bonk. Both being a mod and with your foodie knowledge. And we got Lazy rolling in with the Prime Gaming since he only gets one. So thank you very much for that, my dude. For the four months in a row already, even though it seems like longer. Dust, thank you for those biddies, as well as Supra. So much love today, friends. Just thank you. That's all I can say. Yeah, we're getting the party started. Hi, Mish. Hi, Faye for Pay. JK. We got Ginger Tea. Iron Legion. Tokusito. Yeah, no feta. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was like, I can't start stream without feta in the house. I'm all alone. I don't got Sammy for backup. No. Okay. Cheers, friends. Let's have a wonderful day of cooking. Shouldn't be too crazy of a stream today, is I feel like when we cook seafood or fish, it usually goes pretty quick, especially if we do rice with it. And then we just gotta do a little bit of chicken butchery today as well. So we have two full chickens to break down. You, I know you guys love watching that, because it gives you practice too. And we will marinate tandoori chicken for our skewers on the grill tomorrow. Fresh naan bread going with that. Yeah, Sam just went out to eat feta, Mish. Probably. <laughs> and yeah, Lazy, we totally enjoyed the rub. It was so, so good, dude. Like for pork, I think it was just money. So here is what we used. Everyone can remember back, what was that, Saturday? Pretty sure it was Saturday. We use Lazy's Lazy Lousy Viking Love Rub. So, so good. And we do have a Lazy Command if you want to pick this up for yourself. It was awesome with pork. We did it on the smoker, but I think it'd be really good with chicken too. Oh yeah, that's what you just said. Well, there you go then. He says it's good with chicken. It's gotta be. That's what I thought we were gonna use it first on was the chicken, but it ended up being pork. You don't know why, I just envisioned Sammy eating feta from the tub in the car. <laughs> oh man. Uh, snack master, a snack attack. And yeah, we got lots of bananas dust, it's true. Well, two of these will be having a smoothie later for basically dinner tonight, a fruit and veggie smoothie, so two are gone. But I found this really nice pack at the store yesterday. It's like so pristine, slightly green still, so they can go a couple days without dying on us oh the link is down but just message him okay so there you go friends if you're interested in some of lazy's love rub just give him a private message and he'll get that over to you good morning white dove how are you doing i got a little tickle of a sneeze here so if i just randomly mute and run away that's what's gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, it's been a pretty busy start of the week. It feels really good. We got four different flavors of jerky made this week. So we did the Vietnamese, the teriyaki again, and then we tried two new ones. So the hot honey jerky, which I'm not gonna lie guys, I had a piece this morning for breakfast. It was so good. 
And then we also tried a gluten-free version, which is also good for dogs too. So it's like a multi-purpose. Hi, hippie, how are you? So far, no cooking happening yet. We're just getting started, kind of catching up over the week, but we're gonna get into it right away. Orca's wondering, on a skewer, tofu marinated feta, pieces of bell pepper, onions, grilled. Yes, yeah, I've heard that grilled feta, or not feta, well, yeah, grilled feta is good, but also tofu. As long as you marinate tofu, I think it'll be delicious. Just don't like leave it plain, because it's just really plain. Okay, sounds good, lazy. Enjoy loading up on charcoal. Stay safe out there, dude. Thanks, guys, for that awesome hype train. And then Sammy was also saying, sorry I didn't also hook it up for you guys, but it's currently taken apart. Sam's been doing some modifications to the hype train track. He's making it bigger somehow. And he's waiting for a couple pieces to come in today from Amazon. So he said, hopefully by the end of stream, we'll be able to put it back together. It's kind of in shambles right now. <laughs> and hi, Vium. What cosmetic products am I using? Because I look more vibrant each time I see you see me, really? Oh, thanks. I was actually feeling a little bit naked. I don't have any lip stuff on today. I've not been using anything different. But thanks for noticing, dude. I feel better and better every week, honestly. I feel like we're just getting closer to something amazing. Nike, how are you? Chilling on a between job vacation. Oh, those are key. Those are so key, hippie, to like relax, decompress, and then prepare yourself for the new endeavor. Sammy's back. And guess who's waiting for you? A view. <laughs> so good. All right, so everyone's had a good week so far. Oh yeah, chat's still rioting today because we never got feta. <laughs> it's not even on the menu this week. <laughs> no feta, guys. They said you went to the store just to eat feta without me. <laughs> people these days okay so today's dish did we post menu yet let's go over it yeah I gotta go <laughs> I'm already shaking my head you know that's bad when Mish so chili lime broiled salmon I found a really really good recipe for that from serious eats it's like a, a chili lime sort of mayo and then we cook it under the broiler so I pulled out some salmon bellies from the freezer We'll cook that up today. So a really easy meal. Anyone should be able to do this inside. And then with that, a chive garlic fried rice. So obviously we're gonna make the rice first thing so it has time to cool off and then we can fry it up with some garlic and chives later. And then one of my favorite, favorite salads, same with Sam, is broccoli spoon salad. I think this one is from Bon Appetit. We've made it before. It's absolutely delicious and well we had a head of broccoli to use up so that's what we're making today and it's it's been a while since I've made it and I'm craving it. I got a silicone brick mold that looks like feta nice viewn. Sam was showing you his cinnamon toast crunch churros. Dude, I had some of those for breakfast this morning too. They like remind me of some old school cereal. They're just absolutely delicious. Yeah, spoon and broccoli. Broccoli spoon salad, guys. I don't know why it's called that tea bean, but here's the recipe for it. So it's the second one there. First recipe is for the broiled salmon. Second one is the broccoli, broccoli spoon salad, I guess, cause you serve it with a spoon. And then the third one for the end of the stream is just the tandoori chicken recipe for tomorrow. Hello Reflections, that is called Cinnamon Toast Crunch Churros Vion, aka Diabetes. It's so dang good, so dang good. Cannot be good for you. <laughs> nope. I think I walked by it in the aisle and then I reversed. I was like, part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> so good. Don't get diabetes from feta. 
probably not. I would say Mish, probably not. Okay, so salmon. I actually don't know what we're gonna be doing for this salmon. All I know is that there's a spicy meal, mayo that gets put on top. So let me view this recipe for us here. In three weeks time, everyone, there will be a halibut here. Sammy's getting hype going and he doesn't realize we already had a hype train. We had a hype train before I even started. <laughs> yeah. The hype train is completely broken right now. That's what I said. I'm like, uh, we're doing some upgrades. There's maintenance going on. Been eating too much sugar lately. It's hard to avoid it. It really is. It's in almost everything. I'm trying to add an extra switch track here and here. So we can Crazy. Add the extra two carts in. Crazy. But the parts should come today. That's what they say. Okay, we're good? Yeah. Okay, so broiled salmon with chili lime mayonnaise. Sounds weird, looks absolutely delicious. And if you've ever cooked salmon or fish with mayo on it, it's actually pleasantly surprising. Like I wouldn't just say things that aren't good, right? <laughs> you guys trust me with this now? Hey Hippie, I watched you cook some stuff last night. Sammy was watching Hippie? Sweet. Chicken is good with mayo too? That's true, Mish, yes. Yeah, and then you put your cornflakes or something on top of it, kind of like a shake and bake. So this is what they say. They say baked salmon offers an easy and convenient way to cook the fish, but more often than not, broiling is your best option. It promises a more intensely flavored brown surface while leaving the center of the salmon tender and juicy. This recipe coats the fish in a thin layer of flavorful mayonnaise seasoned with harissa chili paste and fresh lime and works with either individual portions of fish or a large party size filet. <laughs> a party filet. <laughs> We're putting the mayo on before we even cook it. Dust? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Rook, you're crazy. Mayo's good on anything, even just straight out of the jar. You're gonna make Nike puke if he reads that. Good. <laughs> Nike deserves it for all the best of <laughs> That's awesome, Hippie. I'm so happy to hear it. Okay, so yield serves four to six. I would say that's about right with the amount of salmon I pulled out. Please, are we having Miracle Whip versus Mayo pull again today? <laughs> Do we need to ask again all the new people that have come in what their thoughts are? So active time for this recipe, 10 minutes. Total time, 15. What? That's so dang easy. Hi, Torino. Thank you for the lurk. Miracle I hope you're doing dressing, okay. Not a sauce. <laughs> you can use mayo for a moisturizer in a pinch, Bonk says. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so preheat the broiler. Meanwhile, stir together your mayo, peppers, lime zest, and juice, and some coriander seed. Season it with salt and pepper. And then we rub that over the salmon. We're gonna put it on a foil-lined baking sheet since it's gonna go under the broiler. We don't wanna do parchment because we will light it on fire. Not necessarily light it on fire, but it'll just burn to a crisp and then the, the dusty burnt pieces are gonna stick to your food and it'll be sad. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. What are you doing? Kiwi. That's oh. Gross. Can you use mayo instead of toothpaste? Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tea bean, but fire is fun. It really is. It really is. I'm just saying it for the people who are scared of fire. Okay, so broil salmon until it's browned on top. The center registers for medium rare, so 115 to 125 Fahrenheit. Do, do, do. It says it can help keep the oven door cracked open while the salmon is cooking to prevent the broiler from cycling on and off. Although not every oven is this way. I have no idea what ours is. 
This is a good tip. If the salmon becomes too browned on top before it's cooked through, switch off the broiler, turn the oven to 425 Fahrenheit, and continue cooking it through a minute or two more. And that's it. Says, oh, there's no other pro tips here. Oh, yes there is. Recipe works equally well with both skin on or skin off salmon. Good to go. Hello, Hassan, how are you doing? Scared of cooking and burning the house down, but at the same time, burning stuff intentionally is fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shot in queen? Thank you for that follow, welcome in. Okay, so first things first, I'm just gonna write salmon. We have to do our spicy mayo. Spicy lime mayo and get that prepped. And then obviously it's a very quick broil. Our pieces of salmon, I'll take them out just so we can determine how long we think it'll cook for. They're pretty thin, so I think that these pieces will cook relatively quick, actually. This is salmon belly pieces. So probably five or six minutes under the broiler, I would say. Thank you for posting the recipes, Orca. So that'll be super, super quick. So actually the first thing that we'll do is cook the rice for our chive and garlic fried rice. There's no recipe for that today. It's super, super simple. So we'll just boil the rice in the pot until all the liquid is cooked out. And then we're going to just spread it out on a sheet pan or something where it can cool. And that way the cooled rice will be able to fry up. You cannot simply just fry up hot, freshly made rice as it'll go into a sticky, sticky mess. So that's why I always say, do your rice first thing, or it's even better if you have leftover rice from the day before. Hey Kate, do you think cooking raw chicken in a microwave is okay or a recipe for salmonella? I've never actually like cooked anything in a microwave. I've only ever used it to reheat stuff. So I can't really guide you, but as long as it's cooked through, I think you're okay. Yeah, fried uncooked rice. Oh, orca. Yeah, that would be rough. Like Mish said, a trip to the dentist for sure. What are you doing? That would hurt your teeth. Yeah, the crunches. Sam was making the noise he thought it would do. So rice, chive, and garlic, good to go. And then our broccoli spoon salad. I think we'll do that after the rice. So for the broccoli salad, there's a little bit of stuff we have to do. It is raw, so that's easy. So we know that we just have to cut up the broccoli. Here's what they say about this one. This salad puts all the best textures on a spoon. Crisp raw broccoli, chewy sticky dates, and crunchy toasted pistachios. The Ras Al Hanout, a Moroccan spice blend featuring aromatic and warm spices, adds a smoky depth to the bright citrusy dressing, which soaks into the broccoli as it sits. Don't have Ras Al Hanout? You can use garam masala or curry powder instead. And if you're a meal prepper, this is a great make-ahead salad. It only gets better with a little bit of time. It really is a good one, so please check that one out. It is already in Discord as well. Dust says, personally, I would avoid nuking raw chicken, but that's just you. Yeah, we don't really know what to do here, but there, I'm sure there are some references online that you could do. And hello to Pixelated Vika, rating with a party of 12. How was your stream today? What did you guys get up to? And thank you for sharing your community with us. We have not even started cooking yet. We're just currently making our prep list, going down or going over what's going down today. And then away we go. Hello, Taz. I hope you're doing good. She made a, a bababa bread. Yeah, I was going to say banana bread. 
in Taz slang, banana bread. <laughs> Admiral, how's it going? Arobas628, hello. And Jeff R. Happy, as well as Daddy Oreo. Hello, friends. I am Kate. Welcome to my kitchen. This is an educational focus stream, so if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask away as we're all here learning together. Yeah, bababa bread. I love banana bread and I have, yeah, I always have a bunch of bananas in the freezer just ready to go whenever I have a craving. Did everything turn out good though? Okay, this broccoli spoon salad, we just read over the description of it, so we know that we have to cut up the broccoli into nice bite-sized pieces. And then if I can remember correctly from the one other time that I've made it, so we heat oil, the ras al hanout and garlic in a saucepan for a couple minutes until it's fragrant. And then we mix in lemon juice, honey, and vinegar. And that's like the warm kind of vinaigrette to dress the broccoli with. And it's got the spices in it. And then we toss the pistachios into there. And then it also gets shallot, jalapeno, so it's kind of spicy, cilantro, and dates to cool everything off. Really, really good. Hello, OSM. How's the week been? <laughs> Orca. Baba ganoush and banana bread? Baba bread. Why do you put bananas in the freezer? So once they turn really brown, these ones are still okay back here, but once the banana is completely brown, instead of just getting rid of it, we can put it in the freezer and preserve it until we can use it for baking. That's why we do freezer bananas. And they say this broccoli spoon salad can be made one day ahead. Yeah, happy to see you guys too. It seemed like everyone was really waiting for us to start up today. Makes the person feel great, I will say that. All right, I'm gonna pop my hair back and then away we go. So we're only doing really two portions of our main today and then later when we get into the chicken butchery for our tandoori chicken, our grill up tomorrow for a couple of our friends. We'll switch things up. Yeah, we're all hoping to see some feta. Well, I was actually happy that I didn't need any feta because we didn't have to go to crazy Costco this week. Just a nice little drive-in yesterday. We ended up having one of our favorite treat meals is a Vietnamese charbroil place. So we each got a vermicelli bowl with homemade spring rolls on it. So, so nom. Okay, away we go. So rice time first. Let's get a little pot out. One of my favorite things, honestly, to cook in the little pot like this. And we're gonna use jasmine rice today. A nice fragrant one. And for Sam and myself, I usually only cook one cup of rice kernels and then you add your two cups of liquid to that. And that's more than enough. It leaves a little bit left over, which will be good if we have any extra fish hanging around. There's now a huge difference between microwave ovens being sold. Inverter microwaves are remarkably different than the older ones. Most everything people don't like about microwave cooking don't apply to inverter ones. Whoa, interesting. Inverter microwaves cook very evenly and at true lower power levels. You can soften butter without melting any of it. Yeah, like we never really use our microwave on high power. We always turn the power down. But even then, like I said, we don't usually cook anything in the microwave. We just use it for either melting butter or reheating leftovers. All right, there we go. Dry rice into the pot. And then we'll head over to the stove top. Yeah, you can see that pretty good back there. Maybe I'll do it here on this little one. That works. So medium high heat on there. 
And then we'll need a lid out. We'll need a spoon for stirring. all about the grill and chillin'. You grill in your microwave, dude? Imagine? That'd be nuts. Okay, so we're starting by dry toasting our rice kernels in the pot. So medium high heat for, let's say about five minutes when we start. And you'll notice the rice kernels are gonna go from like translucent to more opaque color. So they go from looking clear to more solid white. And that's us toasting the rice, so it'll help the rice stay nice and loose or have separate kernels when it cooks. And then it'll also have like a nice little nutty taste to it. Put the coal in the microwave until they're on fire. Oh my gosh. I need to look up a YouTube to see if anyone's ever done this yet. <laughs> You've made cauliflower crust in the microwave. Did it turn out pretty good? That's actually something pizza-wise I've not tried yet. You have a friend who will cook chicken in the marinade in the microwave and then barbecue it? Supra. It's like, you know, I know that Supra knows better, but sometimes you just can't tell those people that. Because they are set in their ways, right? Yeah, we know that. Okay, so I have my one cup of water ready to go here. And I usually toast this until it looks like about half of them are toasted through. While that's going, I'm just gonna prep up this sheet pan for when the rice is cooked. Just gonna tear a piece of parchment to line it. And it'll cool off there. And away we go. It was pretty good considering you had mashed up the cauliflower with a fork so you don't have a food processor. That does sound pretty okay then. <laughs> There's people who microwave water to get tea. Oh, I've done that before. But I only did that when our kitchen was torn apart down here. I was like, how am I gonna boil my, my water for my coffee? Because we didn't have a stove hooked up. But we did have a microwave. So that's exactly what I did. We're getting there. We're almost there. And yeah, once we have the water in here, maybe 10 minutes cooking on the stove top. This is my favorite, favorite way of cooking rice. It's a uh, East Indian influence there. The peak S tier move is microwaving the cup of tea you forgot to drink yesterday. <laughs> yeah, same with like cold coffee. Oh man. Now that's living. Is she stirring rice in a pot without water? I am, JK. These are why you ask the questions. Because, yeah, you could come in and be like, what exactly is going on here? Why is she doing this? So we're dry toasting the rice. You could also add fat to it. But we're going to be using a good amount of fat later when we fry this up. Huge gop of coffee. Yeah, I need it in my life, Taz. What can I say? Yeah, she's lost her mind. Night Wanderer, the tea kettle is your most used kitchen appliance. I was just thinking in my head, it's like we don't own a kettle because I don't think I would ever use it. It's the newest thing in the culinary world. Guys, do I have to make a YouTube video on dry toasting rice? I think so. I think we're just gonna start making meme YouTubes. This is where we're gonna go. Mrs. BC, thank you for the six months with your Prime Gaming sub. 
I know you only get one, so thank you for using it on me. I hope you've been well. Yes, I should bonk. Okay, let's give this a stir. One more minute and we'll add our water. And when we add the water, it's gonna sizzle like crazy, but that's exactly what we want. According to Amazon, your peace tea is here. You're excited for sugar. Mmm. Kate cooks memes. <laughs> Can you make rice by cooking it one kernel at a time? Oh my gosh, Mish. <laughs> Actually, one of the funnier things I've seen recently is I think all genders know what a hair straightener is these days, right? So one of my, well, not really a friend, let's say interweb Instagram friend, who you both follow each other for a while, she took a unpopped popcorn kernel, put it in the hair straightener, legitimately pops popcorn. I was like, this is amazing. Just like hold it, wait for it, wait for it. It's just like, <laughs> too good. You're here all night, Bean? Okay, I think we're gonna add some water to this. It's looking like it's about half toasted. Oh yeah, and that's what we wanna hear. So that was only one cup. Let's grab the other one. We keep that on medium high and now we can put the lid on. I would say we are pretty much done with this spoon now. We'll switch to a spatula to get the rice out of the pot. So this is more like a boiled rice than a typical simmered rice how like most people are taught to cook it. It's like you never boil the rice, you only simmer it. But in my mind, it's way better to just boil it. And it doesn't take as long either. Yeah, once we have that poured out onto the sheet pan, all spread out, then we'll pop it into the fridge. It'll be good to go for us whenever later. Probably take about half an hour to fully cool it down as well. Just gonna go grab my water. Why is there a need for four? Oh, for Admiral. You're a microwave nerd? That is so cool. <laughs> I've never heard of that, but I'm into it. Agua. Yum. Okay, so after this, should we get into, I think I wanna see how the salmon is looking. I think I wanna get it out of the bag and lay it out, cause it looks like it was kind of vacuum sealed a bit funny. So we can open it up and maybe I'll just put it onto a big cutting board. What's everyone's favorite way to cook salmon or even eat salmon? I feel like there's so many different ways to both make it, right? You can eat it raw, you can eat it cooked. You don't, Orca? Mmm, good one, Mish. Yeah, smoked. Your potatoes are peeking up from the ground? Good. We have a bunch of stuff popping in the garden too. I think peas and beans are coming up. Looks really, really nice. Yeah, grilled salmon, me too, Taz, me too. I like to get cedar planks, soak them in white wine dust, place the salmon steaks on it, put on the grills. Yes, yeah, salmon steaks. One of my more favorite cuts of salmon too, and they're so good on the grill, I find. Yeah, that sounds so, so good. You don't eat it, JK? That's awesome. You make it for your dad, though. 
That sucks, Orca. So you're saying someone ruined you on salmon then? I'm kind of with you, Mish. Yeah, I can eat smoked salmon every day. Lox on a bagel, so, so good. I'm just waiting for this to bubble up a bit more and then we'll pop the lid off a touch. Otherwise it will, it will boil over and make a mess even though sometimes it still happens. Yeah, soak the planks in white wine and then it kind of steams in the white wine as it cooks on the plank. Hey, look, it's AM Souk. Hi, AM. So AM, click on all of the purple links of the recipes there. We have three. There's the spicy broiled salmon, the broccoli date salad, which I think you guys would love, and then the tandoori chicken that I was making yesterday. You did it. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, everyone say hi to AM. They pick up food from us most weekends. Most weekends we cook them tasty creations. Okay, so our rice is going now. We pop the lid a touch just so it doesn't go over. And I might turn it down just a touch. Just a touch closer to medium heat. See, you can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Orca, is it Paul? No, it's not Paul. Paul, we've not got him onto Twitch yet. I don't know if he has time to Twitch, if I'm being honest, Orca. Same way that Zach doesn't often have time either. Okay, so while that's going, I'll just kind of listen for it to go over, because I have my back turned. Yeah, we're, we're cooking for them on Saturday. They're gonna get some of our braised beef and papardelle. Yummy yums. Let's see what we're working with. Oh, it even went over. See, I told ya. I told ya. Salt beef and cod? Are you making a Jigs dinner right now? Oh, those chunks look so dang good. Okay, so this kind of cut probably in half. And same with the other one. And then we'll have four pieces, you rice pot. <laughs> you heckin' rice pot, what are you doing? Aw, AM, that's so nice. I know you won't start, we can, we can send you jerky still, it's okay. Taz says, I've ordered fish and chips for lunch, I have curry sauce left over from the weekend, I'm gonna pour it on your chips. Yes, you are. That sounds so good. What kind of fish and chips did you get? Do they give you options like they do here? Okay, so this is skin on, and then you can see part of the belly. Currently deciding whether I wanna keep that on or try and clean it off. Might be easier to remove after it's cooked. But this chunk is gonna be money. Cause that's probably just gonna melt and be delicious. And then these other two pieces, I was just thinking we would flake up and probably make a salmon wrap with once it's been cooked. So that looks pretty good. I think I'll leave that how it is guys. And that's all prepped up, ready to go. I'm just gonna put the lid back on until we make the spicy mayo. So now I can just put that in the fridge. And I just wanted to get those to start laying more flat because I noticed that they were bunched up in the bag. Walleye chips or pickerel, you're able to choose there? Yo, that sounds delicious. Yeah, this is salmon that is from our friend Zach. His family's been fishing the local waters here for over a hundred years. Combined experience.
No, I was asking about what kind of fish. Because, yeah, we don't get the option of pickerel here. We get, you can choose cod, halibut, or salmon for the most part. Yeah, it does look good, though. And you can notice how the salmon belly is more fatty. So that's why I was like, oh, broiling this up nice and quick will be heavenly over everything else. Good to go. I think I'll grab the broccoli now. And the rice looks like it's almost done. You can come back over here. So this is what I want to show you. It's like all of those little air, air hole pockets. So that's how you keep your rice nice and light and not just cooking it together. So all we do is cook that until there's no liquid left and we're almost there. Usually I just check with the spoon when it seems like we're near the end. Do, 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 just crossing stuff off. Just rolling right through. And hi, Scarlet, how have you been? Whoa. You get Ontario walleye even, Taz? That's awesome. Right now, I'm in BC. But come July, we'll be in Alberta. Yeah, plus the freshwater fish you can get, like bass and trout. Get the best of both worlds, I would say, T-Bean. You're sleepy, Scarlet Luna. That's kind of how I woke up this morning, too. But the sun is shining, so it's helping to wake me up. Muted? We ain't muted. <laughs> Got him. You got me, Orca. You got me good. And yeah, I was going to say, Scarlett, I've not seen you in a while. Trout is delicious, Supra. It's like salmon, but not. That's what I would say. It's good to also, you can smoke trout. It's really, really yummy like that. Or usually I do like a stuffed trout whole. Who's the girl that did the gardening in soup? The one that you knew from... Morganics. Morganics. I think the rice is done, guys. Yep. Okay, so before we just scoop this right out of the pot, what I always do, put the lid back on, just off of this hot, hot burner for now. And we'll just do like a five minutes to steam this up, finish cooking it through, and then we'll pour it out. So the next thing we're getting into is the broccoli spoon salad. Oh, hello! A rare Norges popping by for a quick check-in. <laughs> See how everything's going. Thank you very much, Norges. Another very long-term resub today. 32 months with Norges. We had 30 months earlier with Rook. Insane. How are things going over there, Norges? Are you getting ready to go back out on the boat soon? And have you had a nice rest as well? I think that's important. Yeah, right, Yukon Bear, is we've been so spoiled. I mean, the good thing about this, Yukon, is I grew up in Edmonton, where we're going back to for 23 years, so it's nothing new to me. And then my husband, Sam, he grew up in Ontario in the snow belt, so winter weather is nothing new to us we're actually kind of excited to go back and experience it again well scarlet all i can say is we're always happy to see you when you do come back because yeah that's the thing is when you don't see our our typical viewers for a while it's like well i hope they're okay that's all we really care about nice to us you used to go trout fishing with your dad Cook it over the campfire, totally. Yeah, that's all I remember from when I was young in the summer. We'd always go out to the lake and go fishing. AM says, Sam, do you ever smoke salmon? We do, AM. We don't supply the fish, but if you bring us salmon, we'll smoke it for you, 100%. Ta 
Ross says we're leaving the island. We are, dude. I don't know if you've, obviously you've not heard our kind of plan coming up in the summer. So we're going to be moving back to Alberta. It's a much more inexpensive province to live in Canada. So we thought it would be smart to start our business there is we save an insane amount on taxes, insurance, gas, all of the above. And then that's also where my brother lives still. And that's where the shop is for us to be able to build out the food truck. You have a week left, Norges, to rest up. Too many projects, too little time. Oh man, I wish I could come over and help you, man. Oh, there we go, Scarlet. Yeah, restrictions lighten up. That's the thing, is we kind of just have to play it by ear, not plan too much for the future, and just gotta go with the flow with this pandemic. I know you, Bear. Well, that's the thing is we'll come back definitely in the fall is we've been asked by some of our friends that hunt is if we would come back in the fall to process all of their meat and stuff for them. So definitely it'll only be a couple months. Hey, okay. Nova Scotia is very cheap building wise. Yeah, that's the thing is Sam and myself, we just kind of decided it's, it's impossible for us to even think about being able to purchase property in this province. So hopefully Alberta is a little bit cheaper, which from what we've seen it is. You can butcher a whole deer. I can't, I've never had that experience, but my husband has. And I hope to have that experience at one time in my life. Oh, I'm sure you can put your own. I think I would do it really good. Is in culinary school, we learned how to butcher a whole pig, a whole cow, and a whole lamb. So I would say it's probably similar to how a lamb would be laid out. Black-tailed deer, lamb. Yeah. Okay, this time is about to go off. Let's pour out our rice. It was just finishing steaming up there. And then we'll make a salad. One of my favorite, favorite ones. And even Sam requests it. So that's when you know it's good. I really think that I, we should go down to these house builders, Sam, and ask them if they need Friday meals, a special Friday lunch. Yeah, you got <laughs> Get them to come and pick it up. Oh, I also wanted to show you guys. So this is how this cooks so nice and clean. So I had to like just scrub off or just use my spatula to scrape what was on the bottom, but it wasn't stuck at all, which I think is super important. So if you just dunk that into some water now, it's so easy to clean. And now we're just going to spread this out nice and evenly. Because if we leave it all bunched up on itself, it's gonna keep steaming and that's how we end up with mushy rice. No mushy rice that will be fried. That's what we don't want. And there's just so many different things that you can add when you fry rice. There's so many options. Fried rice is like marble slap. You know, as many mixes as you want. I cook rice almost as well as Utah's. Sam, Sam doesn't even cook rice anymore because he just loves how I cook it. It's like my one designated thing. I am the rice cooker. And I also like, I refuse to buy a rice cooker, but look at how nice and separate all the kernels are there. You can tell that it's not just like heavy and mushy and stuck together. So I'm actually just gonna pop that up on the trivet first. We'll let some of the residual steam come off of there for a few minutes and then I'll pop it into the fridge for us. 
Would you be able to use the microwave one minute rice stuff in this? Like the, is it called instant rice? I don't know what it's called, Orca. Cause I've not used it in a long, long time. But I actually don't know. You might be able to. You refuse as well, Taz? Yes. <laughs> we are both edgy rice people. Yeah, I just can't. Yeah, I can't bring myself to make rice in a rice cooker. I really, really enjoy making it in a pot. USD CBD. Thank you for the follow and welcome in. So rice cookers, I think, are most useful if you're gonna cook short grain rice and then make sushi afterwards. They really do a good job in that aspect. But other than that, I don't know. Oh, that's fair as well. So Bong says, well, I like my rice cooker. I can have rice on standby for days when making a batch. Fair enough. Wait, you just keep the rice warm inside of it? So you have not even used rice cookers enough to know their full usages. <laughs> yeah, keep the rice inside, keep the rice warm. That's what sushi places do. Then they just out. Crazy. Okay, what does Vune say? Having grown up in Southeast Asia, don't understand why people would not want a rice cooker. But then again, I eat rice super often. You make two to four cups in your Lay Crew set. I just made one cup for us, and that's more than enough. But yeah, we maybe eat rice once a week, that's it. So you guys saying that you love your rice cooker probably eat rice more often than just once a week, right? Yeah, that makes sense, Bong. You got a Japanese brand of rice cooker that like really has dialed in all of the special settings. <laughs> Scarlet, yeah, why is this so good right now? I don't know. Okay, what do I need out for this salad? Definitely need broccoli. Do I need anything else out while I'm over here? I think shallot and garlic I'll grab. even be able to get a little crazy today guys i know it's not friday but it's thursday so we might get thirsty we picked up some beers yesterday i got a really interesting one it's a grapefruit goes for all the beer lovers out there i got a four pack it's like this sounds very refreshing okay let's get into it and then I also got a raspberry sour and a California IPA. But I thought that the grapefruit goes would be so good with this lunch today. Griffin picked you up some lagers brewed with tortilla chips. That's corny. <laughs> <laughs> I trying to imagine how that would taste probably delicious bonk Vune is terrified and I'm like wow I need that <laughs> I did thanks Vune thanks for calling me out a growler of dark cherry IPA nice one Supra Norges has been cold smoking some salt cod. Amazing boiled with potatoes, crispy bacon, and a carrot stew. Carrots diced in bechamel. Norges, I need to experience some of your Norwegian cooking. Because some of those things sound kind of weird to me, but I think all together they probably taste delicious. I mean, you wouldn't make something if it's not good together, right? Okay, I still need to grab from the fridge lemon, pistachios, jalapeno, cilantro. Gotta shell a couple pistachios still. That's a big jalapeno, but we'll use all of it. Spice up our life. Do, 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 do. This cilantro. 
And I also have this little herby container that I might use up. <laughs> Occasional droolage, I like that, Orca. Admiral says Instant Pot is better value more versatile than a rice cooker oh man we might be starting a war here today okay let's get into our broccoli so i think we'll just start breaking it down we don't need the leaves so we can get rid of those and then why don't we start by just cutting out some of the stem like that And then we should be able to use most of the stem here. A lot of people think that it's just not useful at all, but the broccoli stem is one of my favorite parts of the broccoli. So nice and juicy, it's got good crunch to it. Almost has a better flavor than the florets themselves. Traditional fish side dish, cool. Yeah, like I said, I would have to have you make that for me, Norges, to experience it properly the first time. So this is all I'm doing to start. It's basically cutting the broccoli down from the stem. We want everything nice and bite-sized. Now that we got this, we can cut it down further. So I might as well grab a bowl for myself to start putting all this delicious, healthy stuff into you. Today we're eating trees. Wouldn't boiling rice in a pot just be easy enough? That's what I think at the end of the day, Supra. It doesn't take me long at all to just make the rice in the pot. Okay, so the stems, what am I feeling here? Probably just do little cuts like that. Just wanted to make sure there was no tough stuff on the outside. It's really good. Not a strong flavor either. And this is all we're gonna do. So like size like that, easy to put in your mouth, good to go. And then we can also think the more surface area we get on the broccoli, well, the more flavor it's gonna absorb from the dressing. And yeah, just have fun when you cut this stuff up. It doesn't have to be perfect looking at all. Whew, that was a thick one. Triple C thick. Good start. Question from a different chat. What are the courses in a seven to nine course meal? Like the official names? As far as like North American food goes, don't really have official names. The only time I've ever seen that was mostly in Italian cuisine, Orca. Maybe in French? Maybe? But yeah, I've only mostly ever seen that on Italian menus. Someone can correct me if they've seen otherwise as well. I think this is a good little chat. Thought the French did course dinners. Yeah, but other than it being called just like first course, second course, third, you know? I don't think French cuisine really has anything special. Or 
Or do you want to say like the word amuse, amuse bouche? Like, would you say that's a course on its own? Yeah. And then you get the appetizer. Soup, salad, main course. And then usually you have a palate cleanser. And then you get dessert, and then you get like petty fours, they're called, little bite-sized sweets to finish off the table. Yeah, with your coffee. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Shamrock Gaming BC. How are you doing? Pre-appy, appy, post-appy. <laughs> yeah, Eric. Pre-entree, entree, post-entree, post pre-dessert, dessert, post-dessert. Post -dessert. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> like if you translated it, that's probably how it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just thinking back to when i was in france and like i had some higher end michelin star meals that's base the basis of the menu you start with your amuse bouche so something that will wake up your mouth or amuse it if you will because that's literally what it translates to amuse your mouth and yeah, usually you have probably a salad and then soup. And then main palate cleanser, dessert, second dessert, the best. A moose it square kind. Broccoli complete. Yum. Not even that much broccoli dust. Success. Thank you for that follow as well, Square Kind. Welcome in. Oh yeah, Shamrock. So the dessert, are you saying the the cookies and cream jar? I'm excited for that one too because I love cookies and cream and also cheesecake. And then the Nashville hot chicken, that's gonna be cooking with Sammy on Sunday. Very excited. French hot cuisine has many courses with names. There are courses such as just for cheese, aperitifs, at many restaurants, you have to choose between a sweet dessert or a cheese course. Oh, that's true. The cheese trolley. I don't think I did the cheese trolley when I went and ate at the Michelin star place by myself because it was quite expensive. I was like, I've already spent over a hundred euros on this meal. I think that's enough. <laughs> So yeah, we do, we post the menu for the week on both my Twitch channel page. So if you go to about, I always have the menu posted there on Monday or it's posted in Discord every week. Bong says we typically have a mousse bouche, salad, soup, main, one palate cleanser, main two. Yeah, usually that's true. Sometimes you have two mains whether you start with fish or chicken for the first one and then end with a darker or deeper meat, like beef, usually. And then you do your dessert, cheese, and or fruit. Not a salmon fan, could you use this sauce for chicken? I think so, Shamrock. I totally think you could use this for chicken. We were talking earlier, because it's like a chili lime mayo that we mix and then we spread on the salmon and broil it. I think you could use that on chicken breasts or even chicken thighs. Kind of do the same way. Let me know if you try it and how it turns out. No, it's all good, Faye. You're not an idiot. Please don't think that about yourself. That's why we ask questions. And then we have people who answer them. We don't judge you. Okay, next up. So we're gonna finally chop shallot and jalapeno. And then we can sprinkle our pistachios in. We've got some leftover ones here. 
so that'll be good and then I just have to grab some dates to cut up too sometimes coffee and tea are separate course yeah yeah I guess it all depends on where you go <laughs> Torino so good okay just take this little bit of broccoli stuff off of here so the shallot I think we're only gonna do half of this it's quite big let's cut the ends off and we can peel it up and yeah we'll only use half dice it up nice and fine And yeah, this salad is just so flavorful. <laughs> You're stealing the nuts, Orca, please. Okay, so cut your shallot like you would an onion to dice it up. So do your nice little slits first, and then you can come back through and do your dices. And then after this, I think I'll get that rice into the fridge. Cool it off. That's just the shallot butt, so we'll just get rid of that since it doesn't really break down even when you cut it. It'll be pretty fibrous. All right, that can just get put into the bowl with the broccoli. Yeah, if you are someone who likes the typical broccoli salad with like the creamy dressing and bacon bits and cheese in it, similar this one is to that one, but this one has so much more flavor and I think is also healthier. Yeah, the shallot butt, <laughs> you like that one? Okay, let's uh, maybe not cut the jalapeno right on the wooden board. Just grab a smaller one here so we don't spice up our entire life. <laughs> Please, Orca. Don't call me out like that. It's dangerous out there. Oh, one more question. If a recipe calls for jalapeno, can you use the jar kind or you recommend fresh? I would say fresh always. Yeah, like what Dust Pirate said. Fresh jalapeno has more like fruity flavor to it and I find is not as spicy. Mm, white pizza with ricotta, pepperoni, and feta. Yes, please. Okay, so we're gonna cut that in half. Maybe I will only use half of this. We'll save that for something else. And then what I'm gonna do, I think I'll cut this into four. So we can go in half first. Go in half that way, and then that side too. And then we'll just do really thin slices all the way through. And I'm keeping the seeds in and the veins because I'm not scared of this spice in this. Massive jalapeno. Just keep chopping. Just keep chopping. Oh man. Go, go, go. All right, there we go. And yeah, once that mixes in with the broccoli, you'll never know if it's broccoli or jalapeno. Ah, roulette salad. Yum. Spicy booger, terrifying. And hi, Jerlo. How's the week been for you? Here's a tip for expensive Paris restaurants. Always look for pre-fixed menus at lunch times. Yep, that's what I did. Same food for much lower prices. Avoid the restaurants with lots of tourist street traffic. 
Pro tips from Admiral. Man, you're like bringing me back to some of the best times ever. I can't wait to start traveling again. Let's rinse our, our spicy knife off. It's like every street in Paris was just so different as well. I'm just remembering back. You find so much different stuff on every street you go down. Sounds good, Fune. And thanks for popping by as well. I hope you and the waifu are doing well. Yeah, take care. Have a great day. Go relax. Take care of yourself. Blue Feather, hello to you as well. How are you doing? Yeah, the week has been good so far, Jerlo. Feels like it's been pretty busy. It's going by quick, but all is well. Okay, let's grab some dates. And then we'll put the dates and pistachio in with the broccoli. And then I think all we have to do is quickly make our vinaigrette. Yum. I think I need a quick date snack as well. Who else loves these? You don't like Paris or you didn't like Paris. It was too monotone. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't really like Paris either. It's funny you say that. You so want to go to Ireland? Definitely on your list. Yes. Yeah, look at this ooey gooey date. So we got to pick some of the pits though. I just need to eat this one first because I love them. Orca, careful what you say in chat, Orca. I think you're outnumbered. Paris is just a big tourist trap. It can feel that way for sure. Mm. Dates are better than prunes, I think, Dust. Yes. Especially if you get the medjool. This is like the high-end one. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're really filling too. We'll do those six. I spent a month in France total. I think in Paris, I probably spent about two weeks. But yeah, I'm sure if you spend maybe a couple more months there, you might have a different experience. I'm just gonna use my knife to get a more clean cut than just tearing it open to get the pit out. So that's how it looks. So the inside's like kind of fibrous and then it just has this little seed or pit inside of there that we get rid of. Like I think Lyon in France is so much nicer than Paris. That's how I felt. <laughs> no one warned you. Oh, you didn't exchange there? Like, it was just so beautiful. Marseille was your favorite? I don't think I spent enough time in Marseille. I only spent a couple days. And also, I don't know why, but it didn't feel the safest as far as like being a single young woman traveling around on my own. I didn't feel the best being there. I don't know why. I wasn't staying anywhere weird. A lot of people like to stare. Let's just say that. 
Okay, so now we'll just finish cutting these in half. And then maybe in half one more time. Then we'll get nice little date pieces to distribute through the salad. Marseille is like that, totally. <laughs> but I did have really good Booyah base there. That's exactly why I went to Marseille. Because that's where Booyah base was first made. So heckin' good. Most of the places I went to in Europe, I just went by what Anthony Bourdain said about them and then went from there. And most of the times he was pretty accurate. Horrified walking to the train station at night? Yep. I think that was one of the things that was recommended though for going to Marseille. It's like, don't really stay out after dark. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right then, I'll go cozy up then. Safe in the hostel. Good little knife skill practice on this salad. We're cutting up so many little different things. Dates are so sticky. Okay, so now we gotta kind of unclump all of that and if you can see how sticky that is, I'm just gonna rinse my knife. Oh, nice, Torino went to go grab some dates to snack on. Has anyone ever had dates stuffed with cheese? Those are really yummy. Or has anyone ever had the dates wrapped in bacon? Because that's another one. Some of my faves. If you're weird about dates, those are a good way to get them back into your life. Make Bacon makes everything better, right? What? Pre-filled with cream cheese? Yum. <laughs> yeah, I went on a date to wine and cheese. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate dust. It's like kind of raisiny. Not as dry though as a raisin. It's just like sweet and fruity. It's got like a nice little sugary sort of graininess. And then I find it just kind of sticks in the back of your cheek. And then, yeah, those little bit of fibers in the middle, add some texture. But definitely, if you're gonna try a date, whether it's again or just for the first time, start with a medjool date. I know they're a bit more pricey, but they're just so much better quality than the typical dried date in the baking section of a grocery store so you'll most likely find the medjool dates in the produce area by all the fresh fruits and veggies just i think it's called spoon salad simply because they serve it with a spoon but maybe we should write to bon appetit and ask them right okay pistachio time nom 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 these were from our last little dessert, right? Just use the rest of that dust. Use the dust up. Dust pirate's like, hey. And then I had this little container. Is this stuff still good? Nope. I had a little bit of scallion and cilantro chopped. So instead, we'll just get into the rest of this fresh stuff, which looks like it's kind of the last day. I'm actually gonna give this all just a rinse and see what exactly is going on here. It looks like there's a big clump here in the center that got really sad and I hate when that happens. Soggy cilantro, bane of my existence? Just might be. 
Oh, us too, dust. Yeah, we can eat an entire bag of pistachios. Do not challenge. Okay, cold water. Let's see what's going down here. Try and pick out the slimy bits first. Oh, I don't know if anyone watches Critter Vision here. Well, I do know someone that watches Critter Vision here. Kimmer's Brewery. Kimmer's. How adorable are the baby gooses over on Critter Vision? Made my entire week. So if anyone has been feeling like they need a little pick-me-up in their life, need some nature, go check out Critter Vision. Stole all of my attention the other day. Give this a little shake. Dry it off. Okay, that was pretty good. I think we need to save a touch of this for tomorrow as well. Yeah, me too, Admiral. I like rye bread with about a half pound of juicy hot pastrami inside. Optional whether there is also sauerkraut and Swiss cheese and Russian dressing. I'm gonna take that and that to chop up. The rest of this to show you what I'm doing to keep it more fresh in the fridge just for one more day, pretty much. We'll be using the rest tomorrow. Just wrap it in the towel and that will wick away any moisture and help preserve that cilantro for us. It's seen better days. I had to unfollow Katz's Deli on Instagram because every time I see their post I just want a pastrami sandwich in my life. It's like I just can't do this. I can't keep seeing these. Okay so I'm just gonna use all of this guys. Both the stem and the leaves because the stem is so delicate in this bunch that we picked up. So we're just gonna chop it all in. And yeah, I think this is the last thing to pretty much chop into there, and then we're working into the dressing next. Yeah, moist kitchen, the paper towels orca, which we don't use paper towels here anymore, happy to say. And it does work really well to preserve the freshness of herbs in the fridge. Is helping to wick away the moisture like that. I've noticed a difference. Okay. Flinging cilantro everywhere. Yeah, it's a very interesting salad dust. That's why I wanted to share the recipe with you all today. 
So we've made it once before on stream, but I don't think anyone really loved it or fell in love with it like we did. The spice on the salad? We have pistachio dust on there. Is that what you're thinking? Probably. And hi, Meg Mala. Welcome back. As well as Scat. How's the wheat going, Scat? Okay, so next up. I need some garlic mince. And we just need some grapeseed oil in a small pan. I think I'll just use my little Le Creuset pan. Did I see Mickey? Hi, Mickey, how's it going? As well as Lauren's rolling in. Welcome, welcome, friends. Yeah, you're welcome, Yukon Bear. Okay, that's that, and then my Ras El Hanout. Literally, the the only time I bought this dice was to make this salad. So here's the container again. <laughs> so this this spice, I'll show you guys one more time. Ras El Hanout. We ordered this online. We don't find it in the stores here. So it says, a traditional blend of exotic and aromatic spices used in Moroccan and North African cuisine. Coriander, curry spice, turmeric, caraway, cumin, salt, chilies, rice flour. I think that's it. Yeah, and then they just keep going in French. So coriander, curry, turmeric, caraway, cumin, salt, chilies, and then rice flour just to help with sticking. Or they said, if you can't find Ras El Hanout, you can use garam masala, which is an Indian spice. Hello, Renor. Got an awesome little two, two by two island for the kitchen scat. Has a cool side green butcher top. Yes, definitely post a photo. Would love to see that. Okay, that is that. We got the dates. And then to bring the dressing together, it's our lemon juice. So we'll juice that up. And then we need white wine vin and some honey. That is it. I'll have just enough of the white wine vinegar there. Two more things to do for the salad, and away we go. And I think we're gonna take a really quick bathroom break, guys. Yeah, check it out, Meg. So we're doing a chili lime broiled salmon today, going with char or charlig gyve, aka chive garlic fried rice, <laughs> and the broccoli spoon salad. And then a little bit of prep ahead for tomorrow, marinating our tandoori chicken for our pita. Yum. Okay, hold tight. I'm gonna be right back.
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Team pee break? Good one, Orca. <laughs> Renor, punishment for being away for a year? What is? Me going for a bathroom break? <laughs> no. Okay, just need one sip of coffee. <laughs> The, the advertisement while you were gone for the bathroom. Oh. You haven't been in since 2019 or said anything. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Reno. Okay, here's a lemon. I had this half in the fridge still. Just roll this guy as well. What does it say? Just one? Two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Two tablespoons worth only. We might get that from just this one half here. Oh, beef short ribs and pulled pork on the offset smoker. I'm sure that was amazing. I am always down for short ribs. I would say that was pretty much two tablespoons worth of lemon juice. No seeds allowed, one snuck through. The juicer, even. Get out of there. Yeah, that'll be good for sure. Don't need any more than that. So we can hang on to this. I think we'll need the lemon for the tandoori marinade anyways. So post this by our dressing pan. It's kind of a warm dressing that we make and then pour it over the broccoli. Let's get into our garlic. So the garlic does get a little cook in the pan. So let's do four cloves of garlic. We'll mince those up. That should be really yummy. So we'll smash them first to make it easier to peel. And we'll just use the garlic press. I will also say, and just remembering back to when we made this dressing last time, it gets so fragrant in the house. So yummy. Like the garlic, and then you add the spice and the vinegar to it. Heckin' good. Garlic press. Welcome back, Orca. Yeah, Lauren, there's never enough garlic. Exactly. Okay, let's go over to the stove top. So I got this little saucepan here. Let's turn our heat onto medium high and then we can add our grapeseed oil in. They do say about five tablespoons worth of oil because it's like the dressing base. So I'll add a pretty good amount. What I think is what we need to coat the broccoli. Do a touch more. Yeah, we'll just wait for that to start looking wavy in the pan, and then we mince our garlic in, cook it for a few moments until it gets fragrant. Then we add in our spice, Ras Al Hanout. So let me look to see how much of that we need. Two teaspoons worth. Get our measuring spoon. Learned a few things, never eat vegetables and never use vegetable oil. Renor, what? Where'd you learn this from? That sounds crazy. Yeah, Admiral, smoke meat at home without paying restaurant prices, worth the effort for sure. So one tablespoon of honey, two tablespoons of the vinegar, just to finish everything off. Easy mode, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna pop this rice pan just into the fridge while we're waiting. It's nice and cooled off now. Now we can let the, the fan in the fridge kind of dry it out a bit.
then we just need to mince up or we'll do garlic slices for the fried rice we'll chop up our chives and we just got to take care of the salmon easy mode salmon and then some chimkin butchery yum lauren yeah grilled salmon and then with mango salsa very good do i do a reuben on a friday we can do a reuben on a friday soup and sandwich day always oil's almost there we haven't did a smoked meat in a while just watching the waves do you want to do a pastrami or a smoked meat isn't it both the same the way that we do it? No, one's dry, one's wet. Oh, the smoked meat is wet? Strong is wet. What did we think turned out better? Yeah, Scat's listening. Did I hear butchery? So, Katz is pastrami, Schwartz is smoked meat. Yeah. So that would be Carnegie is smoked meat, Katz is pastrami. I love pastrami the most. Then we, do a wet here. we love pastrami the most and yeah we're doing some chimkin butchery later for tomorrow's tandoori chimkin grill up is it's always good to marinate your tandoori chicken the night before a dollar a pound you can get pork picnic roast that's nuts admiral I'll allow this raffle iron. Smoked meat isn't the only wet thing in chat. He just got out of the shower. You crazy. How are you doing today, dude? Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to start mincing this in. Yeah, it is sizzling a bit already. And that's okay. That's what we want. That's why I let the oil heat up just a touch before we did this. It smells good already. Yum. I'm so excited for this salad. It's literally the first thing I thought of when I woke up. I'm like, yes, I get the salmon with the broccoli salad today. <laughs> okay, scrape all that goodness off. I think I'm actually going to hold on to that garlic press because we might need it for the marinade. Keep it clean. All right, give this a little swirl just to distribute the garlic around in the oil. It's sizzling right along here. Then when it starts to turn golden brown, we add our spice into the pot. Our Ras Al Hanout or Garam Masala. Whatever you have access to. Wow, you can like barely see the garlic down in there. Crazy. There's a moose crossing right now. Cute. Scat. You ate healthy all week, and then you had a double quarter pounder and a bunch of candy. Just wrecked. Wait, you can get pork short ribs? That sounds unreal. Mm, Couple of porterhouse steaks for $5 each? The beginning of the summer. Where are you guys finding all this tasty stuff for those prices? Sounds awesome. Sam's just sniffing the garlic from the background. I'm actually going to pop this window open just a touch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the bottom bits are starting to turn a bit golden brown, but we can cook this a touch more. It'll just give us more flavor in the dressing. Been watching the moose migration off and on. Haven't seen any. Sammy's watching it for you. There's mooses right now. There's meese. Go look at the meese. Okay, sizzling. Sizzling has calmed down. Now we can add our two teaspoons. This is what the Ras Al Hanout looks like. Let that get roasty toasty. And then we cool everything off with the lemon juice, 
the vinegar, and then the honey to balance. But this always smells so good when you add it into the pan. Yum. Okay, a couple tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Who smells the garlic? Uh, I'm just wondering if the oil's too hot. I don't think so. Almost. Scariest thing in the forest. A moose. The oil found the vinegar. Guys, my uh, heat is not even on right now, just so you know. Let's cool it off proper. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> smell the hot vinegar. <laughs> what a guy. Okay, so lemon juice, white wine vin added. Now we'll just balance with a bit of honey. Sam just comes in here and starts making so much noise. I just put the honey into my whisk, a teaspoon worth. Let me just whisk this together. And that's a quick little dressing. Yummy. Okay, let's give it a taste. Leave the whisk there just in case we need more honey. Have I had pickled garlic? Yes. What, that's trending on TikTok? We did that years ago. Yeah. We did it years ago. We pickled garlic and then blended up and it was the base for a pizza with like fennel sausage on it and stuff. So good. Whoa, that's kind of sour still. Just a bit more honey. Do one more teaspoon. And then I also have to remember the dates in the salad already. So those will add some sweetness as well. Okay, that should be good. That's why I kept the whisk. We get to dress the broth. You have some pickled garlic in the fridge right now. Hey, hey, Cammy. How are you doing? You gotta wait till your 16th birthday. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> okay, check it out. There's the dressing for our broccoli spoon salad. I think, probably just gonna keep the pot tilted like this and then use a spoon. Just cause it likes to separate right now. It's not like they put any Dijon mustard or anything to help with the emulsification with the oil and the vin. Just do nice spoonfuls like this to start. Looks like we might have a bit extra, so we'll add a touch at a time. Let's see what this does. Now we need our spoon for the spoon salad. Ah, hippie, thank you very, very much for those seven months in a row subscribing to our channel, being part of the kitchen crew. Yeah, seven months of good cooking and company. Hopefully we taught you something along the way. Oh, nice one, Kame. What a coinky dink. You made fried rice last night. Fried rice is always good, isn't it? 
always a good one. Let's toss this spoon salad with our spoon. Oh, I think we'll definitely need more dressing. There. We opened up some more area to dress. I think the broccoli really does a good job of soaking up all the flavor too. The salad doesn't feel like greasy or heavy. Like I said, it's similar to like the North American broccoli salad with the bacon and cheddar, but way more healthy, this version. Hey, that's all good. We did a five times hype combo, good one. Rothline. I feel like I could spare two ribs before I would miss them. Yeah, if only pork short ribs were a thing here in Canada. Maybe in the prairies they are now, but on the island is... People eat very simply, I find. Don't really like to try too much new stuff. They like their burgers and sandwiches and stuff like that. Yo, this is looking yummy. It's like kind of creamy looking. So excited to try this. Does that look good or what, guys? Broccoli. Hello, Lily Pad. Bacon is healthy, they say. I mean, everything in moderation. Thanks for the follow, safe lobotomy. Good to hear it was safe. <laughs> I'm having a bite. Look at all that goodness. Only thing we haven't added yet, I wanted to taste it first, was salt. Let's do a little sprinkle of salt. Doesn't need much though. Really, really good flavor too. It's like sweet, spicy. Got all the flavor from the Ras Al Hanout. The little bit of flavor from the shallot. Yeah, you would never know that there's like half of a massive jalapeno diced into this. And yeah, I just love all of the textures and flavors in this. And it does really get better as it sits. So that's why I did this earlier in the stream. So we can come back to this. Let it marinate in the fridge. Scrape all the goodness off of the spoon. Okay, just kind of pack that into one even layer. That should be perfect. Oh, you did raffle iron. I was really hoping that someone would come in today and say that they've made the salad. Cause I don't think chats believe in me quite as much about how delicious it is. It was bonkers good. That's what we said the first time we had it. We're like, that is so good. So here it is again, come back into our life. And I think last time I didn't have pistachios. I did cashews or almonds, also good. Uh, almonds. Yeah, we did almonds with the dates. And as you can see, or if you can, Raffle Iron, we used pretty much all of the broccoli stem too. So this can go into the fridge. Okay, let's just put a few things away. 
all of this goodness back here. Oh, smallest amount of white wine bin. Should put one on the list. Are you going to use it again? White wine bin? I can try to not. <laughs> Ooh, feta in that salad. Orca. It would actually be pretty good, I think, with the flavors. Don't feta me. Don't make me feta it. Feta would work, it's true, Bonk. <laughs> Tobacco flavored butter bacon? Lily, what is this madness? Have I ever tried making my own wine vinegar of leftover wine, a mother, and a ventilated container? Yeah. I have. Yep, yeah, it works good. I just never really have any leftover wine. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Not that I like drink it, I just don't drink wine often. And the one that I use is I just use it for cooking and that's it. A pull out drawer of the cupboard. Ooh, like you're saying where I pulled my spices out of. So those are called Reva shelf. At least in Canada, they are. And they're really, really handy. They have all sorts of different pull out shelves. They even make one for like a KitchenAid mixer full setup. Reva shelf. I will say though, they're not cheap to buy. They're quite expensive. So just uh, be aware of that. It might be something that you accumulate over time. Meg Mala, that salad is so good. It seriously is. <laughs> Misha, great reasoning for not making your own wine vinegar. I'm gonna use that one. There's just never any leftover wine. What can I say? <laughs> okay, so for the fried rice, we do need the garlic here. I might as well use up that other half of the shallot. And then I'm just gonna go clip some fresh chives from the garden. And then we'll get all that stuff together. And then we'll finish with our salmon. Yeah, that is so cool, Raffle Iron. It does really make sense to make your own VIN. Lily, everything in Detroit is expensive, really? That's pretty much like the province we live in as well in Canada is every Canadian knows it. They're like, oh, BC must stand for bring cash. Accurate. are giving her. We'll do a mix of garlic, chives, and regular. Really chive it up. Um, it is actually a pretty nice day outside today. Noms. Got them. There's the beauties. Just gonna give them a little rinse on the bottom part here. How there was a touch of dirt. And we'll dry them off. Give them a chop. Oh, BC, yeah, I heard my name. We were just talking about British Columbia. <laughs> so I'm thinking for the, the chives being fried into the rice, we should probably do the garlic shallot for a few moments first and then put the chives into the pan. And that way they won't get too cooked down. 
Let's get into it. <laughs> you like that saying, Des? Yeah, BC, bring cash. So we're just gonna do nice, thin, delicate slices of our chives. Add color into our fried rice and also a nice like sweet oniony flavor. It's not gonna be too overpowering and I think it'll go really, really good with our, our broccoli salad and the broiled salmon. Sammy's in full on hype train construction mode right now. Yeah, that's a good bunch of chives. Holy, they are popping out there. We'll just pop that into this container. Yeah. Chives, chives everywhere. Keep calm. Chive on. <laughs> Good one, Sam. Meg, do I sharpen my knives? So Sammy sharpened this one last and I'm gonna be sharpening it next. Pretty soon I think we'll do them again. Yep, I'll be using a knife jig that we picked up last year. And thank you FCB for those thousand biddies. Are you having a good afternoon so far? Thanks for popping by. Also hope the week has been well. Okay, those are good to go. Pop that to the side. Let's peel up our other shallot that we saved. We're just gonna dice it or slice it in half first. And then do nice thin slices all along. Chive Nation, <laughs> yeah. So we'll go this way. So one slice, make sure I went all the way through, I did. And then I'm just gonna turn it and do thin slices of the shallot like that. And that'll get fried with the garlic. There's the little shallot butt. Pop that into a container. Now garlic, whenever I make garlic fried rice, I really like to just slice the garlic cloves so you get a good bite of it in the rice instead of mincing it. Let's do those five cloves. Pretty good size. Once again, we'll smash to make it easier to peel. A slow day for a change, FCB. Yeah, that's always nice, isn't it? It's like, wow, I didn't even know this existed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you for that as well, Orca. Yeah, Orca just posted the video that we made with our special knife jig that we use for sharpening. Can you tell that shallot was a bit strong? It's like almost trying to make me cry. Would I recommend a sharpening stone? So we have the knife jig for sharpening and we also have a set of shun whetstones. I guess I would recommend the shun set of stones, but honestly, I don't think we'll ever go away from using that knife jig. And that comes with a bunch of different stones, so you can really dial in the blade. What we got going in, Dust Pirate. Thank you for gifting the sub to the channel and our awesome food and drink community. Welcome to the crew, Magmala. It's great to have you. Keep asking those questions. I'm preaching the gospel. Thanks, man. Okay, this garlic clove was just a bit big, so I just cut it in half. 
And now same with the shallot, we just come back through. Nice thin slices. Boom, we did it. Do we smoke salmon? Yes. <laughs> it's so funny, you're the second person that asked that today, Renor. Yes, we smoke salmon. We'll smoke it for ourselves, but we also can smoke it for other people if they supply the fish. Because we don't buy fish from the store here because it's just absolutely insane prices and not the best quality, I would say. <laughs> Doesn't make sense for being on an island, right? Okay, so there's our shallot garlic in this little container for the rice. And then once those are fried up, we add our little bit of sliced chives. And then you add your rice and fry it all together. So another thing crossed off of the list, we can just pop back here. And then maybe for the rice, we'll get our pan on the stove top that we're gonna use. Just giving that burner a little wipe. And whenever you're going to attempt frying rice at home, you definitely want a large wide bottom pan. You want as much surface area as possible to spread everything out. And then I do recommend cast iron or using a wok is I think the other best option. You just wanted to know, Nor, you're not from Russia. Thank you, cows on seals for the follow, welcome. Okay, salmon time. We've not really looked at this recipe yet, the broiled salmon. We're like, not a ton. So broiled salmon with chili lime mayo. <laughs> Sounds so weird, but looks so good. Oh, Makawaka. Thank you, dude, for the seven months in a row already. That's crazy. How have you been? Have you still been able to stream and all that fun stuff? Okay, we need one cup of mayonnaise. And then we were not able to find Harissa chili paste in our grocery store. Is that something that you guys can find where you're at? So I'm gonna make up my own little chili paste instead today. We don't really have a choice. You're still going out exploring new places? Good, I'm happy to hear that. Safely, obviously. Matze Power, thanks for the follow. Right, if you have trouble frying rice using a wok, try doing it in smaller batches first, and then you'll get better at getting it to circulate, and you can add a little bit more. Good one. Oh, that's so awesome, dude. Yeah, double vaccinated, but still masked up. So happy to hear it. Okay, mix together mayo, lime zest and juice, and some coriander. It's gonna be hard, you don't eat seafood, and you're gonna be a cook in the Navy? That doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be cooking fish all the time though, Meg. Nope, not at all. I think you'll be okay. It's gonna be a lot of chicken and beef. Yeah, fish is expensive, right? So that's why I say you're probably not gonna be cooking that all the time. And I wish you the best of luck on that whole journey. Sounds like a fun adventure. Yeah, Maka, I think that you are doing the right thing, protecting yourself. Let's grab some mayo and some lime. 
What? This sink smells like farts. The sink smells like farts? Oh, I was gonna say, I just opened the fridge, so that's probably why. Oh, that's too, maybe. We got an influx. Telling me my kitchen smells like farts. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you making the stuff? No, I'm just looking at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> he married those farts, so it's okay, Roth Iron says. Creep tumor? You had lobsters on Sundays in the Navy? What? <laughs> so that's what the incentive they give to join. Shit, I should have I'm in. Okay, let me just quickly look up. We're gonna do a little bit of learning here together. Harissa. Harissa. Another fun word. A Tunisian hot chili pepper paste, main ingredients of which are roasted red peppers, spices, and herbs. Caraway, coriander, cumin, olive oil. Created by Pound and Chilies and all of the spices together. I think I should be able to make my own then. What am I feeling here? This chili I'm kind of scared of, but it is the proper one. Oof. I think I'm going to open this. Piri Piri pepper roasted made into patash. So yeah, we can't find harissa here at all, raffle iron. It just doesn't exist. So I'm just gonna make my own little version, I think. It's gonna be more loose. And then we just mix it into the mayo. They just so call it. In the mayo anyways? Yeah. Chili lime mayo broiled salmon will make it delicious either way. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you like my subtle oh you're making the dressing nicest way of saying get out of my kitchen oh sammy thanks for making the dressing you'll never see him go quicker <laughs> gotta go <laughs> patache thank you for teaching me raffle iron patache an african pepper sauce yum okay let's go big view with this Got this, this. I'll bring a, a bit of cumin. I'm just gonna mix everything together in a bowl. And we need a touch of garlic. Maybe paprika would be good, hey? A touch of that? Yeah. Now it's coming together. Harissa on a roasted pork loin. Sweet potatoes, peas, yum. Makes the kitchen smell amazing. There's so many things that make the kitchen smell good though. Always. Okay, let's do, for the amount we're making today, I think I'm just gonna use a spoon. We'll do a tablespoon of the paprika. This is gonna add good color and a little bit of smoky flavor. I do have a mortar and pestle, but really the only thing I'm gonna use it for is these chilies, and I don't see that working out the best. So just trust me in what I'm doing. We got this, guys. <laughs> yeah, of course she does. I'm doing a scant amount of dried garlic because I don't love it, but I think we need a touch in there. 
And then our coriander. Paprika is often used in harissa. Perfect then. And yeah, this is coriander seed that I have toasted the whole seed first and then I blitz it up myself. So it's nice and fresh. So we'll do a good teaspoon of that. And then some cumin. Oh, thanks, Rothline. I'm making the harissa as best as I can. Well, that's the thing is a recipe, actually I'm gonna do less cumin because I don't like it too strong. Like a quarter teaspoon of cumin. I think as long as you have the main components, whether the ingredients are fresh or dried, you're good. Yeah, the less cumin, I think that's the best too. Mistra, what's going on there? That doesn't sound like very good advice from a doctor. If I had a doctor that told me that, Probably go get a second opinion. I like how this bag is resealable. Coriander and cilantro orca not used in your kitchen. Oh man, I can tell that that's some powerful chili in there. Kind of scared. Looks really good though. I like the flakes in it. Why did I get rid of this spoon? Okay, I'll go for a gentle little pour. Go like that. Oh, thank you, Hermit. Yeah, hydrate, Kate. Cheers. Thank you, thank you. Okay, she didn't tell me to stop eating, but I think it's like stopping drugs. I need to go cold turkey, completely stop eating. I think that'll be the worst possible thing that you can do. Like we always say here, is it really is all about consuming things in moderation, especially when they contain sugar and anything that's processed, right? So I would actually guide you to go maybe towards more of a like clean, eating diet, eating more whole foods, try and stay away as much as you can from processed stuff. And you'll probably notice a huge difference. Nice, Meg, yeah, can't go wrong. It's 4 a.m. and we're watching this. Okay, so that's our like loose harissa, let's say. I'm gonna give that a little stir here and see how it looks all together. Cause I think you can buy harissa in the spice form too, can't you? I swear I've seen it some places. But like I said, everywhere we looked yesterday did not exist. It smells good. You know what else is good with harissa is lamb. Mmm, I think that'll be delicious. Yeah, wait, so you're saying I should drink bourbon in moderation? <laughs> yes, Dust. That's exactly what we're saying here. And hello, Palooza, how are you? Okay, let's zest up our lime. We'll see how much we get from this one lime. It's quite small, but probably one lime zested will be lots. And then we'll juice it. And then we just gotta mix all of this together with some mayo and we coat the fish. Very interesting. I've never done this recipe before. I think it's gonna be absolutely delish though. And then because the fish gets cooked under the broiler, it should also cook relatively quickly. So that's why it was important for us to get our salad done early, get our rice cooked off, because that's also gonna be quick on the stove top. All right, there we go. One lime zested, it's about a half tablespoon worth. Oh, 
good one, Hermit. Yeah, meal prepping also does help. That's why I always say like I'm more more inclined to eat vegetables once they've been prepped and they're just ready to grab out of the fridge rather than just like buying veggies that you have to prep at any given time. So if it's already prepped, much more inclined to eat them. Nice lime juices. Nice orange boy. Planted small grape tomato plants today and it made your day. Gardening is good for the soul, for sure. Okay, hold tight guys. I'm just gonna take a second bathroom break, BRB. Okay, I'm back. Hi, hi, Cookie. All is well here. I hope you are doing well. Happy almost Friday. Oh yeah, this juicer. Uh, we just got it from like a little one-off kitchen store, but I love that it has the lime and the lemon area. It really works well for both citrus. Okay, let's mix this up and kind of hydrate our harissa spice powder that we made and then we'll marry everything up with our mayo yummy though that's looking awesome honestly that doesn't look too much different than what would come out of a container yeah it pushes on the rind instead of just the fruit <laughs> is sam snacking on feta no <laughs> You guys. So they said we should add a cup of mayo to this. I think that'll be lots actually to cover our four pieces of fish. So let's go with that. Oh no, cookie. Yeah, did you miss the feta? All of you are going to be missing the feta until next week. Bonk is hating on me so hard right now. I don't want to use the Kewpie for things like this. I feel like it's too special. Not until we get the pack of Kewpie from Costco, let's say. Okay, let's mix this up. And be deep, dark, and delicious looking. Smells really good. Wow. Mmm. looks a bit thin I'm also gonna add some salt to this because otherwise it'll be hard to season the fish through what's kewpie so kewpie is a Japanese mayo 
which has more egg in it than the traditional like North American brand. I'm gonna do the two teaspoons of salt in there. It did have a good hit of, hint of lime though for flavoring in here. Okay, now I'll grab the salmon that we prepped up earlier, it's just in the fridge. Nom, there it is. <laughs> Supra. I might stuff burgers with feta this evening. Yo, can you donate some of that feta? <laughs> Perch the merch. Aw, that's nice, Supra. Okay, so these are random pieces of salmon belly that I took out of the freezer. Our friend Zach caught them last year for us. So we're just gonna slather the mayo over the top and then these get broiled up. Sam, oh, he's not watching. I was gonna ask him what he thought. Can you take a sec? He's watching a vid, give me a moment. Just pause that for a sec. I just have a question. The salmon belly, do you think I should clean that off? Or will it, under the broiler, it'll kind of crisp up? Like these pieces, I'm gonna flake for a wrap and that's for us today. I would maybe clean that off. Clean it off? Yeah. Okay. I had to ask. Yeah? Have not cooked a ton of salmon bellies. Okay, this is a knife we were using earlier. So I'm just gonna slide our boning knife under and just try and take off that little bit of white connective tissue. I think that might just turn into something that you wouldn't be happy with. It'd kind of like burn. I would clean it off if I was smearing it as well. Yeah. And then you also see like, look at how fatty that is under there. Insane, the belly. Yeah, good one, Roth Iron. Always cut away from yourself when you're doing stuff like this. towards myself. So I don't know what to say now. <laughs> Chat's gonna be like, what is she doing? Okay, that's good. And the other two we can pick up hard after. And honestly, I'm not gonna wash my hand up yet since we're just getting into this. Oh, that's true, Admiral. The membrane might also cause the fish to curl when cooking. Sriracha, honey, black pepper, garlic for smoked salmon. Really good. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, hermit, careful. Part of your nail and the tip of your finger once when making tzatziki. Always keep the digits curled. Towards away. <laughs> Dust, yeah. It's the same thing. Okay, so this is all it says to do. Just kind of slather on our spicy mayo. I'm gonna try and leave like a pretty good amount on top. 
and then I think like as it cooks it'll heat up and slowly drape over the sides right ah we're also going to be putting this on a foiled sheet pan because it's going to get super messy and because it's going under the broiler we can't use parchment because it will burn So I don't think I have any more sheet pans, so I gotta take the one from the rice, but that's fine. Because we're gonna get into the fried rice soon anyways. This is gonna be good. I've never really cooked salmon with anything like that on it before. Hello, Double Tap, how are you doing? No, burn parchment, not good eats. <laughs> Maya, yeah, some lessons to learn are more painful than others. Cut your pointy finger. You tried using a cheap paring knife to cut strawberries. So yeah, curl the fingies, exactly. Sharp chef knife, sharp chef. Good to go. Wash knives separately because your knives are so good you're scared of them. Yes. Yeah, that too. Fried salmon skin is a delicacy. It's good when done right. I will say that, Admiral. Okay, I'm just putting a few spices away. And then I'll go grab that rice so we can prep our pan and get the salmon onto there. And then we're almost there. Not a bad stream today at all. Mayo can go away. Maybe we'll keep the lime out for garnish. I think that's a good idea. I smell is the broccoli salad in the fridge here. Nom. We're making naan. Uh, I wasn't even going to make it on the egg. I just like making it inside in the oven. Maybe we can do it in the Traeger tomorrow. I guess we'll see. But we are using the egg tomorrow to grill the tandoori chicken on skewers. So, so good. Dried out rice. So this is why I always do parchment paper underneath like rice or even pasta when we're cooling it off because you can just gather it all up on the sheet of paper and like your sheet pan underneath is still completely clean because I need this pan so I'll literally just bring this over by the stovetop little rice parcel good to go okay let's get some foil and hello madam how are you just cleaning your classroom up a bit popped in for a wave Hello. Oh wait, yeah, I might be a little bit loud. Thanks for that, Orca. You good old foil tear. Oh, I'm making a mess. Don't touch the salmon. Move over. Spread this out nice and even. It's all lined up. Oh. 
fold over the edges. Cool, that's a good looking pan. Let me tell you. Okay, now I'm just gonna transfer. Yum. Question, if you have a big chunk of beef, should you smoke it to make jerky or cook it? What, uh, what's the cut of beef? I think that's what matters the most here. What the heck are you talking about? Squirrel stew? <laughs> Sleepy A, hello. Did I cook the rice on parchment paper? No. We cooked the rice just boiled simply in a pot and then we poured it out onto the parchment lined pan to cool it off so that we can fry it up. Okay, done with that. Now we just have to broil that up. I think we are... Uh Pretty good to get cooking here, guys. All the salmon stuff is crossed off, and then last thing on the list, we'll do after we have a munch of lunch, is the tandoori chicken. Finish off with a bit of chicken butchery today if you've never tried it out for yourself. We're gonna be starting with whole chickens, and I'll show you guys how to break them down We'll be breaking some down for the fried chicken on Sunday, and then the rest will be sliced up for the skewers tomorrow. It does matter, Renor, what the cut of beef is, because different cuts of beef should be cooked different ways. And hi, Practical Escapist, how are you doing? Welcome in, Katie. Also a fellow food and drink streamer, and Canadian. The best of both worlds. Okay, I've been caffeinated. It's a great feeling. I think what we're gonna start with just for the fried rice, let's come over. And I need some more grapeseed oil for the pan. Heat that up over medium high heat. Definitely want to get a good coating on the pan. Maybe even more. And then, got this one pan here, all seasoned up. Remember from our tuna on Sunday? She's all ready to go one more time. And now I'm good to turn on the broiler for the fish. So that'll take a few moments. And then hopefully everything times out. While we're waiting, let's grab our plate. And that's good to go. How's today on the opposite coast? It's actually pretty nice outside here. It's like sunny but kind of overcast at the same time but nice and warm and so far so good <laughs> too many skunks end up as roadkill around their bonk save the skunks yeah they stink how long do you broil it for so the recipe says about five minutes or so I would say anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on how thick your piece of salmon is. And the recipe is linked there. It's the first one, it's from Serious Eats. And they're all also in Discord too. Okay, I like this spatula for our fried rice. It's nice and flat, it's good for scraping. 
And then we're starting with our garlic and shallots. And then we add the chives. You guys are just talking about roadkill. That's so cute. Yeah, stop, stop running in front of the cars. Poor squirrelless. Hello, Titan. How are you doing? Oh, look at our oil's almost ready. It's looking wavy in the pan. Can you butcher roadkill? I mean, if you want to, Orca. I guess. How's the day, Titan? How are your bees? And all of the other goodness that you have going on? Your cat taught you how to hunt small animals this year? Hey, as long as you learn something. <laughs> you guys, yeah. One good thing about roadkill, it's already tenderized. Shake my head. I guess it's no different than talking about rat jerky. This is gonna be so good. Okay, to test out to see if your oil is hot, do a drop. Oh, she's sizzling. We're good to go. We're good to go here. And I think our broiler is probably good as well. So this pan's on a medium high heat. Let's just stir all this stuff up, get it coated with the oil. And then it should be a few moments to get it golden brown. Do not burn the garlic or the shallots for the fried rice. Please don't do it. Okay, salmon's going in. Very intrigued by this recipe for the fish. You can stir this stuff around if you want, or sometimes I even just grab the pan and like give it a swirl. I don't think we're gonna fry up the chives. I think we'll just mix it into the rice at the end. So it stays really nice and green and fresh. get in there. It really doesn't take long either. And then once the rice is fried up, we can hot hold it for a few moments before we plan to serve, but not too, too long. Because then it'll lose its crispness that we've worked so hard on as it sits and kind of steams, right? I didn't call it fried rice for no reason. Okay, I think we're gonna add the rice. So take our parchment. I'm just gonna put that into the pan. And then we're gonna give it a press. That's the exact sound that we want. And that'll kind of cool off the pan. And then we'll give it a stir. The rice is so sticky to my fingers. Yeah, I don't really love cooking chives either. But charred scallions are good. Yeah, okay, this is exactly what we want. Just give that a stir so the garlic and shallot doesn't get too dark. Okay, now that that's stirred off of the bottom, we're gonna give this one more press. Yep, 
You guys hear the sizzle, right? That's exactly what we want to hear. Oh, babies! The salmon's looking so good! The um, spicy mayo has started to bubble up on top. I think I'm just gonna give it a swirl. Yum! I think we're pretty close, though. Okay, ready? I think I'm gonna go for a stir again. We don't want to disturb the fried rice too much though, because then you won't get it fried and it'll just start to fall apart. And then actually, didn't I use like a metal spatula last time? I felt like that one wasn't quite enough. Yeah, this one. So this one, just hold the handle and we should be able to come right there. Yeah. Give it a flip. We'll let it go one more. One more time frying up and then we should be good. We don't want to get once again the, the garlic and shallot too dark because then it'll start to taste bitter instead of sweet and roasty. Just gonna turn down the heat to medium as well. Yes, I have made biryani. It's really, really delicious, Hermit. Have I, I think I've only done it with lamb. I might be wrong though. This salmon. Okay, guys, look at this. Look at how this looks right now. What? It looks super yum. It's not quite done though. So I think what I'm gonna do is just put it a bit lower in the oven. Let it finish off. Okay, let's turn off that pan. It's like a volcano, totally. Volcano salmon. Do one more scrape. Yummy. Crispy rice bitlies. Make sure there's no stickage. We're good. Just scrape all those bitties off and then we'll mix the chives in. Yeah, right? It's like, oh. Five minutes, they said, for cooking. I should definitely keep my eye on it. <laughs> it's easy to forget about it within five minutes, right? I'm glad I checked when I did. I'm just gonna turn the oven off now. Yeah, and that'll finish cooking through. That'll be lovely. All right, stir this loveliness up, and then I guess we'll just put a lid on it while our salmon is finishing. That looks great. And we'll get our broccoli salad out. Yum. I didn't put a sauce or anything really with this dish today, but I wasn't thinking that it would need anything. I'll talk to you guys about the salmon cook in one moment. I just had to finish this off. So we'll just take that off of the hot burner as well. So salmon, I cook kind of similar to like a steak. Is 
if you've ever cooked salmon when it's close to being done it starts like oozing out or seeping out this white sort of liquid right so I compare that to like when we cook a steak and it starts to have the juices run out of it so that's kind of a sign that at that point when the white liquid starts to come out of the salmon it's at like medium rare or even more than that probably close to medium so that's a sign of you to watch it a bit closer right and be like okay this is almost done I shouldn't go anywhere but yeah a lot of people I would say overcook their salmon and fish is really quite delicate I have to say it's like that is probably perfect so let's check this out together since we're at a really good point because I think that they're done. Does it look better on your side? I don't know, the foil kind of messes with the lighting, I feel. Like just giving it a feel, it feels firm, but it's not completely just covered in the white juice, right? It's so easy to overcook. And well, lucky it is a fatty fish, so it's a bit forgiving too if you do that. Yeah, poke the meats. So like this one, kind of the thickest spot is over here. I think I'm just gonna go in from the top. So temperature on that, it's saying it's at like 98. Was it saying 98? No, that's just because it sat for a bit. Like 110. If I check this one, I don't want to disturb it because I'm using it for a photo. I'm just going to let that rest out. It's like me personally, I'm okay with medium salmon. Maybe actually I'll put it just in the oven for a bit. But that's the thing is if you think that it's getting close to being done, just watch it. Keep your eye on it. And I think the more that you pay attention to the food that you cook, the more comfortable you'll get with it, right? But they did say in the recipe, if you found that the salmon pieces were browning too quickly before it's cooked through, you can pop your oven on to 425 Fahrenheit and it'll only take a minute or two to finish up. But like our oven is still hot. So I think that that'll just finish up in the next few moments while we're plating the rice and the broccoli. <laughs> if there's no smoked salmon in heaven, I ain't going. <laughs> Good one. Very happy with how that looks though. Broiler salmon, never done before. I guess now we need a salamander. Salamander salmon, that's what we'd call it on the food truck. Spend $200 a month on smoked salmon in your life? Yeah, the salmon mander. Exactly, Palooza. Exactly. I could definitely see this, see this being a dish that everyone would love. Okay, here's our spoon salad. Let's give it another stir. There's not really any loose dressing underneath or anything like that. Looks so heckin' good, but I think I'll put the rice onto the plate first and then we'll put the salad on. And then the fish last. That was really easy though. The hardest part of today, I think, was the broccoli salad. Just taking all the steps. Sam the smoking salmon mander. <laughs> Only reason I went to university was to be able to afford more smoked salmon. Now that's commitment. Yeah, I've seen that as well, Admiral. A lot of sushi bars use a culinary torch to sear the salmon. Not really my favorite thing though, I would say. Not the best flavor. Oh, did you hear that crispiness? That I just scraped off the bottom of the pan. Yum. Who in chat likes crispy rice bits? I gotta put this plate down. I need two hands. 
crispy fried rice bitlies. It looks great on the plate, I have to say. Good, uh, good point putting the chives at the end. Yum. Check that out. <laughs> Nike. I went to college for weed and grills, except I wasn't even enrolled. Now you got the right idea. <laughs> yeah, Maya, like the crispy rice bits are just money. And then with the crispy little like garlicky chips as well. So good. And yeah, Orca, that would be the same as the brulee torch. We got a doggo. She says, guys, I'm uh, up from my nap now. Just wondering how things are going. Hello. How are you? How are you, Miss Shmoo? Just checking on the salmon. It's still happy in there. Yeah, poshers. Poshers. Get out of the garbage. You just a permanent garbage doggo? Oh man. Yeah, hot dog for sure. <laughs> okay, let's get some of this on. Has she seen Sam yet? I don't think she saw Sam yet this morning. She's going to visit him. Sammy was still sleeping when she came and saw me. Okay, good spoonful of what? The spoon salad. Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. <laughs> sorry, I didn't see you. When you almost step on your dog's foot. You haven't seen him? He's been doing some like back back end research. Okay, I will. I just had to wash my hands. Come here. Come hither. Hey, come here. Come here. Hey, excuse me. She's like, oh, Kate, don't lift me up. <laughs> she hates being lifted up. Can I have a kiss? Posh. Don't eat my face! No, don't, don't do it! Not today, guys. Not, not today. Excuse me, please. I'm sorry. We're gonna ask the sous chef to just calm it down, please. Thank you. I'm the one calling the bills right now, not you. <laughs> that was a growl, hey? I taught her to sound really mean. Because a lot of the time, like when I was in my youth, we'd be at home during the summer, right? All alone. So if someone would come to the door, taught the taught Posh to get him. Okay. Grabbing the salmon. Yeah, she's got stuff to say today. Okay, that looks like pretty dang. Perfect. Yeah, the feel of it. Oh man, I think I need a photo of this as well. Cause it looks really good. The bubbles. I would be very intrigued and interested to hear if someone does this with chicken. Because if the chicken comes out looking like this, uh, yeah, I could get into that. I got something on my camera. Chili lime broiled salmon. Okay, I think I'll just use my hands and you guys saw I left a little room here. I think I'll put it on an angle like that on the plate. And 
then when I lift this up, I'm just going to peel the skin off. Oh, I was trying not to disturb that nice crust. Oh, it's so heckin' hot, I can barely hold on to it. But yeah, a good sign of perfectly cooked salmon is you can peel the skin off. I think for this instance, no, we wrecked it. For this instance, I'm just gonna go for the transfer. I'm so sad right now, that was the perfect piece. Do I have to take this other piece then? I think so. We wrecked the photo piece. Oh, that's how flaky that is. Oh. Wow. Portable leader, thank you for the follow. Yeah, document the deliciousness. pretty heckin' good, I will say. And maybe we need one garnish. I do have some little lime wedges that I think would look good on the plate. And then I was gonna do a drizzle of chili garlic oil. I'm just gonna pop this lime wedge right there. Just to bring everything together. And then I don't know if we're gonna make more chili garlic oil before we leave. So I'm just gonna go literally around the plate. Doggo. Hey. <laughs> Stop. She's like, oh, was I into something? I swear I wasn't being bad. Like a soul. Nice and healthy, yeah, exactly. That's what I've been uh, leaning more towards these days. Like Thursdays and Sundays, been cooking us stuff that's a bit more healthy. And that usually happens when it's spring here. Spring is sprung. This looks great. Bless you. Bless you. Bless the papa. A radish in the center would be good too. Are we gonna do anything to the radish though? Yeah, express ship it. Like just one more time. Look at that salmon. And so when I was moving it, it basically broke in half. So that shows how perfect we cooked it. I think I can hold this up safely. Like you can see the sheen in the flakes still, right? Let's try this. Yum. Mmm, that's good. I like all the flavors of the spicy mayo. I'm just gonna do this little bit of lime. That's really good. And then the mayo is kind of like creamy. Dulls down the spice a bit. Can have Sammy yeah, drone it over. I think for sure. The marinade would work with chicken, and I really would love if someone tried it out with chicken as well. Okay, I'm gonna go for a full, full bite. Salmon, rice. 
Oh my gosh, it's hard to get the full bite. And some salad. Thank you, Cookie, for those biddies. Even a note our food truck fund, that is much appreciated. Okay, full bite. Let's see how she is. The salmon on its own was good, but all of this together, a hundred times better. Mmm. <laughs> Pleaser, thank you. Nice even number there. Would be a shame if something happened to it. 123 biddies. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's like the Ross El Hanout just combines so good in the broccoli salad and then the crunch of the broccoli, but also like the juiciness and the sweetness of the dates. All delicious things. And then the rice is just kind of the filler. Mm-hmm. I'm loving that. And yeah, you're right, Admiral. If you were to do chicken with this, I would recommend letting the chicken marinate for at least a couple hours, or you could do up to overnight, like 12 hours overnight, and then cook it. Is the chicken will just take that much longer to absorb all of the flavors, and then the marinade will also help to tenderize the chicken as it sits together. And thanks, Reflections. Mm. I'm so happy with this one. This is exactly how I imagined it would be. And yeah, it is very reminiscent of like Moroccan or South African style food or cuisine with all of the flavors that we have here. That rice is money though. Like the crispy pieces. Mmm. You wanna go? Let's go. Good girl. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Sammy needs a bite. I don't know what he's feeling. I can't make him eat nothing. Not yet. Oh. Sammy burned the roof of his mouth the other day, so he says it hurts too much still. Sad times, and that is so true. It's like when you burn your mouth, it is not fun to eat after. Custard? <laughs> Just eat more custard, Orca says. Okay, I'm gonna have a few more bites, and then it's chimkin time. We're like traveling around the world with our menu this week. Like today was Moroccan food. Tomorrow's Indian food. And then, well, I guess Saturday's like North American or Italian because of pasta. And then Sunday, the fried chicken, we're going like Southern States. Good menu. We hit all the spots. Money. Mmm. You're Moroccan and you approve? Yes. That makes me happy then. Okay, since Sammy's not ready yet, I'm just gonna put the salad back in the fridge. Yeah, very healthy and like satiating. Just have some herbs in my teeth here. Okay, I'm gonna wash up. Just gonna put that to the side. Very happy with how everything turned out though. That was a really fun and easy recipe. Would love to try a different style of that with like some different types of fish. I could see cod being really good 
maybe not with the same style of mayo something a bit different but yeah a white fish would definitely benefit from that all right we got our big cutting board yeah wow we've not done that in so long here bonk i'm very happy that we got that done today before you even had to go to work yeah, it's just after two o'clock now yeah that's exactly it meg i like being adventurous with my cooking helps me learn more also i think it helps like build your confidence up okay quick rinse Chimkin time. Whoa, it's really juicy in the bag. Very juicy. So we're gonna butcher up the chicken first, and then we will make the tandoori marinade and then mix everything together. I'm gonna need one large freezer bag for the chicken for Sunday that we're gonna keep for the Nashville hot chicken. So I'll put some pieces into there. And then for the tandoori chicken in the marinade, maybe we'll just do another bag. And then for all of the scraps, I think I have a sneaky stock bag in the freezer to put the bones and stuff like that. Yes, so I ain't making another stock, not this week. So this is how I keep anything that I want to make a stock with at a later time. So that's like a chicken back and stuff like that. So I'll just add into there and keep it in the freezer until we're ready to go. That's that. And yeah, it's only two chickens, so won't take us very long to do this and i don't even know if we need to put anything into the blender for the marinade that'll be really easy as well so yeah dust i just keep a bag like this in the freezer if i know i'm gonna be adding to it and then when the bag gets full that's when i make the stock from it whether you do just the bones and the trim with cold water or you could also add onion celery carrot for even more flavor. We're gonna need our boning knife for this today. My absolute favorite. Doot doot doot. And I'm just gonna run it over my steel first thing. Welcome back, Orca. Admiral is saying they like to use wild rice with fish. Yeah, that's always a good option. Fish yields well to like a lot of different side dishes, I would say. I've had this little tickle in my nose like all day today. Like every so often it makes me feel like I wasn't gonna sneeze, but then I never do. What is this madness? Yeah, the knife sound, the loser. 90% of the time leads to good things. <laughs> the other 10% we don't talk about. calories per bite orca holy fish and chips these chickens are quite large as well yeah this will be lots at first sam and myself we were a little bit worried we're like is this gonna be enough chicken because we had zach last minute order when we already done grocery shopping yesterday we we're like oh no but yeah we had these in the freezer so just trying to straighten this out i don't think it will 
So first thing I'm gonna do is take off the legs, as always. So we start by making a slit here until you can see the meat of the leg underneath. Same thing with the other side. And then this is the hip bone. So these two parts on the chicken is the hip bone. So we have to cut under that to release the leg. So usually I do that first as well. And then the next step, Vuhn hates, is we're gonna pop the legs out of the socket and you'll see how nice and flat they lay after that. And then doing that, we also see where to cut in between to remove the leg from the carcass. So it's just one really even slice down through that way, done and done. And then same with the other side. And butchering your own chicken, guys, is gonna save you so much money in the long term. And also, you get to like learn something new. Show off your skills. Okay, sounds good, Bonk. Enjoy the day at work. As always, don't work too hard. Stay safe out there. And can't wait to see you tomorrow. You remember it from last time, but it's still fun to watch? Well, that's the thing, Dust, right? Is practice makes perfect. So the more often we do something, the easier it's gonna get. So now to take off the breastbone, I'm just gonna cut along, or to take off the chicken breast, we cut along each side of the breastbone. There's that. And then we'll do the other side, now that we opened it up. Just keeping your knife right tight with it. There we go. So the wishbone, does everyone know what the wishbone is? That's at the top part of the chicken breast here. It's in a V shape. So usually I just turn this around and cut along each side of it just to loosen the chicken breast off. I think you get more meat this way too. Okay, now we can turn it back around and then I just use my finger to start loosening it off and then we can open this up and then we just keep cutting along slow and controlled with our boning knife along the rib cage. Kind of as we loosen it off, it's gonna keep opening up and make this really easy. And then if this part of the skin is still attached, let's just cut through that. There we go. So now that we're at this point, I kind of just cut down. You can see that it wasn't bled out all the way. That's why there's that little bit of blood in there. I hate that. Doing this cut, we just release the tendon from the chicken tender. And now we literally just have to cut one slice off of the wing. And that, is our boneless chicken breast. Very large actually. And then for the wing, so we can see the separation of the knuckle here. You just come down and through. And then the only other thing I'm gonna do for the wing is we're just gonna get rid of this tip here. So there's a knuckle there that we cut through and then that goes in the stock bag. So this is for the fried chicken. We got a full chicken wing, good to go. We'll put that in the fried chicken bag. Next one, and yeah, that's the thing, Orca, is like the more that I explain it to you guys, the more I hope that you gain the confidence to try it for yourself afterwards. Still a bit frosty there. Release that, perfect. And then it's just one nice slice. 
There you go. And then our wing. And then we'll get rid of the tip. Fried chicken bag. And that is all stock. All stock goodness. Rough fools, is there no reason to trim off the parts that are bloody? I mean, unless it freaks you out, no. It's okay. Like, it's all edible. I would just make sure you cook it really nice. Okay, so... I think I'll remove the tender, which is this little floppy part of the chicken breast for our fried chicken. That'll be so good. Nashville hot tender? Yes, please. So that can go into that bag and then we just take care of anything we don't want on there. Done. And then one other part, so there's a bit of cartilage there. Just anything hard we wanna get rid of. A little bit of connective tissue here that I wanna get rid of. And then this is the one other part that we clean on the chicken breast is where it was kind of attached to the wing. You just slide your knife under and we usually come down and then back. And we just clean out all of that like white shiny stuff. It will not get broken down even when we cook the chicken. And then our next step, because I don't want to, I don't think I want to cook the tandoori chicken with the skin on tomorrow. What do you think, Sam? Mm. Tandoori chicken skin on or off on the grill? Well, if we leave the skin on, it'll probably flare up uh, more. Uh, no, I would probably still leave skin on. Okay. Then I'll just do slices of it for the skewers. So we'll leave this at this point. That's all prepped and ready to go. So let's do the next chicken breast, exact same way that we did the last one. So start with your tender. Usually just peels up like that. Yeah, like that little bit. Since we're marinating, all of the chicken, I think it'll be fine. Like I said, as long as you just cook it through proper, you'll be good. But yeah, that blood, that's just showing that they didn't bleed it out the animal properly to begin with. Okay, that's that. And now the leg. So you guys remember what we did last time to debone the leg? Cars are carb free. Yeah, we like cars here. We can talk about that. And hi, Suki. How are you doing? Okay, so first step for deboning a leg is we just take our knife and go all the way around the knuckle of the drumstick. think we're good and then we know that the butt the bone runs this way and then that way so first come through here whoa my knife was so sharp that I was digging into the bone so yeah usually start by opening up that part and then we can come back through this way Kind of hold on to the skin because it likes to get a touch like rubbery or stringy when we're cutting through this point. All right, so now we've opened this up. We can see this other bone and now it's literally just about taking the meat off of the bone, trying to keep as much meat usable as possible, right? Usually I come up that way. King Grigaloo. Grigol, Grigulo, thanks for the follow. How do you have your chicken done? You like it medium rare? Meg, are you being serious? You like your chicken medium rare? I don't really like medium rare chicken. It's not my favorite, it's a texture thing. I know in some 
cuisines though and cultures, they eat that. Okay, so there's one like big knuckle right here, right? In between the, the thigh and the drum. That'll be our next big thing to clean out. Now this part could just come through up that way. And now that we have the two bones, I usually just hold on to them like this. And then it's just about loosening off of this one knuckle here. There we go. And that's all for stock. Now, if we turn that over, one completely deboned chicken leg. Still is the skin on, which is super flavorful. And then we're just gonna look over to see if there's like any connective bits. I see a piece of cartilage. We clean that out. And to me, that's like the hardest part of butchering a chicken is if you have to debone the leg. Otherwise, it's super, super quick. And this part, that's all good. That's all good. And then if we look down here, so this is where all of the tendons are in the drumstick and those are quite firm and they don't really cook down with heat or soften up so usually I get rid of most of those as if we like hold on to them as they're pretty slippery and then just pull and cut but definitely want to get the main really large ones out and I don't know why my nose is running so much today the heck Unknown. It's so slippery, guys. I can't even hold on to it with my little bit of like fingernail. Okay, that's a big grouping right there. And these tendons are also a thing why I think a lot of chefs don't like to cook turkey because the tendons in the turkey are way worse than this than they are on the chicken okay that should be good ah get off <laughs> And then I always feel around for like any bone fragments because obviously we don't want to put that in people's mouths. Okay, first one done. I got pro troll skills? I wasn't even trying. All right, next. So I think we'll do the two other chicken breasts from the other chicken for the tandoori. And then we'll use the other two legs for our Nashville chicken. Cause I really love frying up chicken legs instead of breast. Way better. And well, the other reason that I thought of is it's easier to cut up a chicken breast than to go full debone of this other leg. So there's that. We got our two bones here. Oh, I gotta loosen up a bit more from the center. <laughs> There we go. So 
So who in chat has made tandoori chicken before? Or have you at least eaten it? I mean, we don't have a tandoor, but we have basically the next best thing. Orca's saying butt in chat. It is getting a little late for Orca. Silly things are gonna happen. <laughs> Okay, that was it for cartilage. Look at that big tendon, holy. Where did that come from? You love it, Sleepy? Yeah, me too. I heckin' love Indian food. And this chicken, like the yogurt in the marinade just helps to tenderize it and keep it juicy these tendons are fighting me okay i think that's good Okay, gather all that up, and then we'll get the next chicken, and then we'll slice all of this for the tandoori chicken at the same time. Aw, I love that, Orca. I have also noticed that you've been here more, so thank you for that. Do you feel better changing your schedule? It's not too hard to deal with. Gotta go for the pop. It's okay, you've gone back and forth with sleep schedule because no responsibilities yet. <laughs> yeah, keyword yet. Do you have something like coming up that you have lined up? Let's get our leg. Done and done. Chimkin breast. Take care of the wishbone. There we go, turn it back around, use our finger just to loosen it off of the breastbone. And then we just use our bone and knife right against the rib cage. Cut that skin. wing's gonna have a sneaky bit of chimkin meat on it. Yum. I'm in. Fry that up. Also, knife by a kangaroo. Oh my gosh. Welcome in to the crew. Hope you're all right. Fried chicken big. What up, Blondie? How are you doing, dude? Happy Thursday to you. Welcome to the butchery portion of the stream for today. We finished off our chili lime broiled salmon plate and it was absolutely delicious. Well, I've not finished it, but we did get to taste it before this. Made sure it was delish and it is. Turned out so great. So we got all the recipes linked for you if you want to make that for yourself. But I know you're in our Discord too, so you can always pop and look for them there. 
there's that. Boom, Orca. Do I have to check that out? You need me to look at the link? I'll have to wash my hands. Cause I'm in chicken land. Okay, where's this knuckle at? Hello? There it goes. <laughs> Hello. All right. Four chicken wings to fry up. The rest of this. Going in the beef, or going in the beef stock bag. We're doing a beef chicken stock. No, it's just gonna go into the stock bag. And then back into the freezer. So even that, those two carcasses did not even fill. Awesome. We have to just clean up these two chicken breasts first. I'm just showing you guys what to clean off is any cartilage that you see laying around. Definitely wanna get rid of that. Or it usually feels kinda hard. And then just this connective tissue here from where it had the chicken wing attached. Oh, okay, I do have my clean knife hand. That's why I always leave that there. Why are you doing this today? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm trying to open it and now it's sending me offy things. So I'm sorry, Yorka, I can't look at it right now. I'm too chickeny. Of course my computer is doing that while you're trying to send me stuff. Okay, that's done. Oh, sorry, we didn't take the tender off for our fried chicken. Fried chicken tender on Sunday. There goes that. If you know how to cut a whole chicken, you save so much money. Cataraxia is coming in with the facts. And that really is all it comes down to. It's like, if you wanna save yourself money and just like live a bit better, start butchering your own food. Even it comes down to being able to cut up broccoli, onions, all sorts of stuff like that. Don't buy the pre-cut stuff. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna take off some of that fat. And then one other thing before we dice all of this up is we're just going to cut the thigh from the drumstick. So remember we know that the knuckle of separation is right here. And then you can also see like these white lines in the meat basically designate where the bones run. So you can see there's one running that way and then there's one running that way. And then obviously where they meet in the middle, that's where the knuckle is. So this little part, just dig your knife in. Oh, look at that. There's the knuckle. So we know where to cut through because we can see the literal separation in between the two. So then I usually just hold the thigh like this because the skin likes to kind of slide around and do one nice even slice. And that is gonna be delicious for fried chicken. There's a Martin Yan video of him breaking down a whole chicken. Yeah, probably in like 30 seconds dust. Okay, there's that part. Boom. Beautiful. So that's our little fried chicken bag for Sunday. We have our stock bag here to go back into the freezer. Cause like I said, I'm not making any stocks today. And now we are done. With the boning knife, I'm gonna switch to the scimitar. And thank you, Orca, for posting the menu for Pat. We did the salmon earlier, and we're just finishing upstream for tomorrow. We're doing some prep. So scimitar time, our slicing knife. And I think it'll be easier, cause like I said, is the chicken skin is kind of 
string elasticy is we'll keep it this way and then I'm just gonna cut nice strips of everything because it's gonna go on to skewers tomorrow anyways. So like one inch strips. Yeah. And then we'll do a bit of each type of meat on the skewer, right? We'll do a bit of dark and light meat. Get the best of both worlds. Yeah, yum. It's gonna be awesome. So we'll just pop that in the bag. And then once we have all of our chicken cut up, we'll make the marinade quickly and then away we go. It was a great day. Hi, Annie, how are you doing? And thank you, OSM. You want us to raid Young Sub 3 on Twitch? What do they do, OSM? What's their stream all about? I'm just trimming some of that extra fat going into the stock bag. <laughs> the chicken skin is crazy trying to cut through it. But I think tomorrow when we grill it, it's gonna add so much flavor. You checked out two houses today, Annie? Congratulations. But we don't think either one will work. At least you're getting the ball rolling, totally. I think that's all part of the process. It's going through those steps. And then you like, just start to know the feeling. It's like, honestly, this house just feels right or the house does not feel right. Gotta go with the vibes, the juju. I really have high hopes for you this summer, Annie, that you're able to find exactly what you're looking for. And then cutting our chicken into pieces like this, well, once they're skewered and then over a nice hot coals tomorrow, should grill up in less than 10 minutes, I would say. The one with the pool had a really small living room, too small even for your piano. Crazy, another one cropped up in your search. Didn't realize it was a twin. Also the basement smelled mildewy. Ooh, that's like your first sign, do not get into that if you smell anything wet don't go don't go into that it's like your first sign that there are some issues that you probably can't see i don't know what's happening with that chicken skin underneath crazy stuff That's fine. That's fine. Okay, now just the legs. So same thing, guys, except I think I need to take a really quick bathroom break. I really tried to get through this, but the coffee is telling me otherwise. So hold tight. I will be right back.
Okay, phew, I'm back. I had to wash my chicken hand and then go to the bathroom and then wash my hands again. All sin. We had four chickens. What? We had four chickens. We had two chickens. Oh, everyone. <laughs> Chat, did we have four chickens today or two? We're watching the YouTube video from the other day. This is what the husband says. He's watching the YouTube video for chicken butchery and thinking it's a live stream. Adorable. The best. Alson, what's going on? Just tuning in. Where do you buy a chicken? I've been trying to buy humanely sourced meat, but it's a struggle. So these ones were from the local store here. It's called Save on Foods. And yeah, they pride themselves on being hormone free and all that goodness, as well as being raised somewhere in Western Canada, whether it's Alberta or BC. Okay, let me see if I open up Discord just on its own Orca, if I can get it to open through that link. No, it just wants to go on to browser. It's being a piece of poop. Yeah, I can't even open it myself, so. Sam can't open it either, Orca. Just, yeah. Can you post it in the mod channel if possible? Berta beef chickens, <laughs> yeah, lazy. <laughs> oh, shoot. And thanks, Admiral. Yeah, this scimitar, it's not too big. And it's also not too small because you can get them in different lengths. I really love it because it's it works for all different meats. Beef, pork, chicken, fish, all of the above. Okay, it's in the mod channel. Thank you for that. Okay, let's finish off our chicken legs here. I'm actually going to bring the boning knife back just for a moment. So you guys see some of the connective tissue in there i think we should try and clean out a little bit and usually there's more like underneath so almost like fish skin so i'm just gonna take my knife here i'm not under the skin i'm just under the meat i'm just gonna slide my knife along because i know that there is some silver under that part of the drumstick hold it and then just pull it and that was literally what we're looking for is that little little bit of goodness that we didn't want there because it's not going to break down or anything like that so that just helped there and then we can see a little bit more on this other part too so just keeping your knife taut and then slide in oh there's even more holy we just kept it going but i am trying to not disturb the skin Although now that I cleaned it, like not off of the skin, it just kind of wants to stay on there. <laughs> okay, I just had to cut through a little bit more. Be surprised how strong the chicken skin is, hey? Like, look at that. Boom. Sneaky silver skin. Okay, now that piece is prepped up, so we'll kind of unfold it back out and then just look in at how the shape of this is I think we'll cut this and have that as a separate and then we'll cut it one more time so we'll do three slices and then that'll match up with the size that we already cut the chicken breast and then those can get skewered together. Awesome. Then we get the best of both worlds. Yeah, silver, we struck it rich. If only. Okay, we didn't clean off the underneath silver on these ones yet either. So you can see it on the tendons there. Side our knife. Usually I just cut it up there, can peel it away. 
We really went in depth with this chicken today. Don't want that. And then we can see the other side as well here that we started. Give that a little slice. Peel that out of the skin into the stock bag. And then roll it back out. I'll turn it back this way, just like the other one. So we'll do a slice. Lengthwise that way. And then one more. And now we just gotta make the tandoori marinade. And who is, who's just rolling in and didn't get to see the salmon plate yet? Are you wondering what the heck is going down? Because I can give you guys a little peek if you need it. Let's get rid of this cutting board and I'll wash my hands. You like big pork butts and you cannot lie? You need the salmon plate THC cake. Okay. Let me just wash up my hands. I've had a few bites of it just to make sure it was delicious and it totally was. But we're really happy with how everything turned out on it. Like really, really happy. Actually, it doesn't even look too disturbed. Didn't have that many bites. Okay, I just put my hand in the, the sauce here. Mm. So there's our chili lime broiled piece of salmon. It literally took what, maybe, well, I maybe should have left it under the broiler one minute more and then it would have only took in the seven minutes under there and then we did our garlic chive fried rice and then that's the broccoli spoon salad so all together that's how it looked really nice and healthy and super flavorful thanks jk okay there's our tandoori chicken bag this I am just going to close up, take out as much air as possible, and then that's gonna go back into the freezer. Chicken stock bag. And then this one is for Sunday for our Nashville fried chicken, or Nashville hot chicken. We're not gonna do anything yet with that, but come Saturday, we'll pour some buttermilk in there and let it marinate overnight. <laughs> Thanks, Cammy. So yeah, we even did a little bit of prep ahead of time. Sammy's chimkin is good to go. We got four wings, two legs, and four tenders. That should be lots, hey? Yeah. Okay, next up, just viewing the recipe for the tandoori chicken. That's the last one linked there for today. And it is from Serious Eats, tandoori style grilled chicken or even Cornish hens, they gave you the option. Just like a very small chicken. Okay, we are going to combine cumin, paprika, coriander, turmeric, cayenne, achiote, garlic, ginger, yogurt, lemon juice, and salt and whisk it. And we're gonna pour that over the chicken and marinate it minimum four hours up to overnight. Salmon is rich in omega-3 fatty acids for your health. Yes, it is, Admiral. And then tomorrow we'll show you how to finish off the chicken. So let's get out those spices. So cumin, paprika, coriander, turmeric, cayenne. Cumin, coriander. Uh, cayenne. Got the turmeric. 
turmeric here as well. Turmeric. I also do have like a premix of tandoori spice, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I used it up since then. Oh, I'm lying. I used to have it. It's all gone now. Did Sammy sneeze and I missed it? Huh? Bless you. Hey? I don't know. Orca saying bless you. Okay. Uh, the achiote paste. Just trying to remember where I put that. Is it in here? Yes, it is. So that's actually like a Mexican ingredient. So it's a natto seed. If anyone knows what that is. Always have a little bit of that on hand. Oh, I named the spices and <laughs> your brain thought I sneezed. It's okay. I will take the blessing, Orca. Thank you. We have, or we need some garlic out again, as well as ginger. And then while I'm there, I'll grab the yogurt and lemon juice as well. Garlic, ginger, yogurt, lemon. enough change and then just some plain Greek yogurt is what we're looking for the nice thick stuff away we go so we'll use the garlic press to mince the garlic I think we'll use the microplane for the ginger and then the rest of this just like it says gets mixed together in a bowl. So really easy. But you could do it in a blender if you didn't want to put any effort in. We'll start with the lemon since we're ready to go. Yeah, the bacterial culture in the yogurt helps to, I guess, soften up the chicken, break it down. So that come tomorrow when we cook it, it's super juicy and tender. I see some seeds snuck through there. We'll take them out in a sec. So we'll do this full full lemon juiced very large lemon very large very juicy try and sneak those seeds I see that's gonna be a bit hard <laughs> the small seeds just snuck through the juicer Almost too small to even grab. Oh, come on. There we go. Whew. That was rough. Okay, let's add our yogurt. We gotta even mix it up. Freshly opened. Yeah, turmeric, well, I would say a lot of the spices and flavorings in this marinade are good for you, Admiral. Yeah, all health benefits for sure. The ginger and the garlic, the turmeric, cumin, coriander, even the cayenne. That bit of spice. like a cup of yogurt into here yeah suddenly it's clear why you see chefs hold a hand underneath when they squeeze because they catch all the seeds right 
Okay, what are our spice amounts here? We'll do the ginger and the garlic last. Two tablespoons of ground cumin? That seems like a lot, guys. I think I'll go with the one tablespoon. Do one full tablespoon of cumin. Black pepper in the mix is said to help out turmeric with the properties, really. I didn't know that. We'll also do, we'll do a tablespoon and a half of the cracked coriander. Almost time to toast some more up and blitz it. And let me just check, cause I don't think I have any more. One more spot to check. Otherwise I'm gonna put it on the list. I might forget. Yeah, crazy. Cracked coriander on the list. Or just coriander seed, actually. Nom, nom, nom. Okay, cayenne. So this is a spicy one. So you determine how much you want. Just gonna do a couple, couple of pats. Our turmeric. One teaspoon. Nice one, Annie. You just seasoning up your sprouts again with olive oil, salt, and pepper. So one teaspoon is a third of a tablespoon. If you guys didn't know that, now you know. So three teaspoons makes one tablespoon. You didn't do pepper. Would I recommend it? For sure, yeah. Salt and pepper with Brussels sprouts is really good. So we did both, Orca. We did coriander. I did a tablespoon and a half of the coriander and then a tablespoon of the cumin. And then this one is mostly just for coloring. So achiote and natto seed. And it pretty much just colors everything red. It has a bit of like floral, oh. When I moved that, it like flung stuff into my eye, but I think I'm good. But yeah, it has a bit of like floral flavor, but it's mostly just for color, I would say. So a teaspoon of that is gonna go a long way. Oh yeah, you could always save the pepper until after, Annie, if you think it'll burn while you roast. For sure. Mickey, your mom was watching before. Was she having fun? Okay, there we go. A teaspoon of that. And then you noticed how I was kind of breaking up the big pieces of it. Oh, for the shopping list, I had to do coriander seed. That's a pretty popular spice we use, so it makes sense to get a bunch more. Now we're going to gently mix this up. So it's yogurt, nice thick Greek yogurt, one lemon juice, tablespoon of cumin, tablespoon and a half of coriander, a teaspoon of turmeric, a teaspoon of achiote paste or powder. That's looking pretty good now. I'm just gonna wipe that off. And 
And then we just have to grate up some ginger and mince some fresh garlic into here. Yum. Mix scuttlebutt, you guys use achiote as well for coloring. You usually fry it in neutral oil so it breaks up further. Yeah, good one. If you fry it in oil first, then you're able to make a paste from it. Oh man, fiddleheads. Annie, please, don't make me. I think that's the chef's nemesis. It's like as much as it's fun to cook with those special things during the season, cleaning like 20 pounds worth of them, not the greatest <laughs> experience. They're tasty. You should try it, Annie. It's like kind of like asparagus, I would say. Yeah. Is the way that I would cook it. The same way you'd cook asparagus, cook your fiddlehead fern like that. You're sick with them in the woods? Go picking, scat. And then don't leave them too long in your fridge, they'll get slimy quick. Yeah, they do break down relatively quickly. It's like as soon as you pick them, I would plan to cook them. Freshest is best. As with everything else in life. Yeah. That's good for garlic. We'll just give it a smash. Oh God, I just realized my chicken fell over. Smash the garlic and then we'll give it a press to get it minced. Seems the music is off. This sound or this song is a bit low. So I can turn it back up. I can hear it on my end. But yeah, that song was a bit low compared to some other ones. You have a volume control that doubles as a second volume control though. So if you turn up your speakers too loud, that way you can hear it, but Chad doesn't hear it. Is that better? Was it actually too low guys? Like it was too low to even hear. I'm sorry. Perfect now? Okay, great. Yeah, now we DJ Beats. That makes me like so happy to hear you guys saying that stuff. Very consistent. That's like one thing that I realized growing up, like later on in life is, that's like one of the biggest things is to just be consistent with like anything that you do. Just makes things go so smooth for the most part. Best thing I can ever say for any advice in life. If one thing about consistency is always being on time and you'll never keep a job if you're not on time. So as long as you're on time, you can pretty much do anything in life. Yep. Yeah, especially important for teaching, totally. So Unity of Peace, I know you're coming in for the salmon, but we are working on our tandoori chicken for tomorrow, just finishing up. This is how our plate kind of started. I have taken a few bites and made a mess, but it was absolutely delicious and so heckin' easy. Literally, I don't think I've ever cooked salmon that quick before. Like six minutes? Almost forgot about it. Just the broiler? Just the broiler. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. Yeah. I saw the sneaky doggo. Oh, hello. Hi. How are you? 
What's up? Papa. <laughs> hey, at least you're consistent, double tap. Consistently a disappointment. Almost there. The sticky, garlicky mess. Send help. Okay, let's give that a scrape. Get all this goodness out. Hey, get out of there. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Don't act like you're not doing nothing wrong. Doggo's like, who, me? Are you talking to me? I could never be doing nothing wrong. <laughs> okay, next up, our ginge. I just took this little nub out of the fridge and I think I'll peel it up a little bit more and then we're just gonna use the microplane. And I do find using the back of a spoon or a paring knife does help to not take off as much of the ginger flesh. We'll go with that. And then away we go. That's so cute, Palooza. We don't have any squirrels that do that here. Never gets old. You look out of the window, the squirrels look like pancakes, flattened out on the driveway, hovering up all the bird seed. <laughs> so cute. Oh, I'm so excited, Annie. Yeah, I was literally thinking today. I was like, okay. Thursday is a pretty easy stream. Ah! Oh man, that was the worst thing to happen ever. I don't even know where all that ginger went. Okay, not safe. I'm gonna put the handle down. But yeah, I was like, okay, Friday's pretty easy. Saturday's not bad. And Sunday, cooking with Sammy. I really jinxed it. I'm not talking anymore, just grating. Like there's ginger on my arm. What's cooking if you don't season yourself a bit? Blaze and Fool, thanks for the follow. Basically how I feel right now. <laughs> the chipmunks will fight the birds for the seed? Evil. See, we don't have that, we just have rats instead. The rats usually don't come out until nighttime. Those rat cheese. Yeah, I'm so excited. I get to build the Legos while Sammy's cooking. Okay, that's where I'm gonna stop. Scrape this goodness off the top. Scrape that. It was a very juicy piece of ginger. <laughs> okay, where else did I throw all this? <laughs> On myself, I got that one. Okay, maybe it wasn't that bad. Just mostly on the board.
mana left and molecular mustard thanks for the follow yeah bird seed wars you want to get technical yeah they're all rats exactly sky rats tree rats rat rats <laughs> Okay, let's stir this up. So the only thing I've not added yet is any salt or pepper. Which maybe we should do a touch of that now and then we can always add more tomorrow before we grill it up. This is smelling right. I've made tenderi chicken before and this is exactly how it smelled last time. Mmm. Yum. pinch of pep the dog yeah may get a surprise tongue full of ginger somewhere i was looking i don't see any pieces on the ground so i don't think it made it there luckily let's add a teaspoon of salt This is the final mix. Then we're pouring it into the bag. We'll give it a little massage and then we don't see it until tomorrow. And so when you're doing skewers, especially with meat, it's a lot quicker if you don't actually dice up or cube up your meat and just leave it in the long strips instead. You'll save a lot of prep time that way. Legless rats are cute. Yeah, a snake. You can be a really great construction worker, but you'll fix anything no matter what holiday. Fact. Same with chef though as well. Welcome back, Orca. Okay, tendery chicken marinade. Good to go. Flour, I hope you're having a great day today. Always happy to see you in chat. Pro tip, just use the plastic bag to wipe the spoon off. Yeah. Okay, now we close it up. Yeah, your bladder is being worse than mine usually is today, Orca. Oh, congrats, Flower, you got your shot. We are now registered, so we're just waiting for like a text message, apparently, for when we can go. Okay, so we're all closed up. Double check to make sure. And now we just have to distribute the marinade, which shouldn't be that hard to do. Kind of fluff it up from the bottom. And do that. We're getting there. Almost there. Just a little bit more underneath there. I think we're good. Kind of smooth it out that way. It looks like everything is nice and evenly coated. There we go. We did it, friends. I'm gonna pop that into the fridge. Complete. What a great day. Yeah, here's Here's how this salmon looked right out of the oven. Cause I just keep walking by and eyeing it up. I guess I can show you there. Like they looked so good. Yum. I'm so happy I tried that recipe today. Okay, that's it friends. That's it. You're all Pfizered up. <laughs> Your grandma will invite you to family dinner for you to fix the kitchen? Not my grandma. Easy peasy for sure, Annie. So one more time for everyone who's not in our Discord. Here are the recipes from today. First one is for the salmon. 
really quick broil on it. Like literally, if you wanna have a quick and easy dinner, choose that. Same with the broccoli salad though. Very, very good recipe from Bon Appetit. And then the last one was for the tandoori chicken. Waiting on the text for your second one, ginger tea. Nice, nice. Yeah, she don't know you. Okay, I'm looking. Uh, Joe. Huh? Joe no, OSM asked for someone else. No, is it not on right now? Oh, okay. So that's the alternative. Okay, sounds good, Sam. Is Joe on? Uh, he was supposed to be on. He's not on. He doesn't start till 3.30. Well, shit. Not till 3.30. We got 15 more minutes. Let's go see Professor Mendel. Professor Mendel? Yeah. What's she making today? It's a cake decorating. Ooh, a cherry blossom cake? Okay, let's do that. All set up, ready to go. Once again, guys, thank you for the wonderful Thursday spent together. It was not that long. Everything turned out so, so good. And we're even prepped up a bit ahead of time for tomorrow. Yeah, you're welcome, Kimmers. You're welcome, everyone. I mean, half of the stream is you guys spending time with us too. So thank you for that as well, right? Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, tomorrow going down, we have our grilled tandoori chicken dinner going with sourdough non bread made fresh there's a little bit of slaw going down some cucumber raita which is like a yogurt cucumber sauce and then for our little dessert coconut oat cookies that i think sammy will help us with it's gonna be a yummy one and we have a couple friends eating that dinner too with us so take care until tomorrow and thanks everyone for all the love today the biddies the resubs we had some crazy long-term ones and welcome in all new followers i hope you pop back tomorrow we'll be live again at 11 a.m pacific and yeah all the recipes are already posted in discord for the whole weekend so go check them out if you want to cook along okay i'm gonna hit that button friends see you tomorrow stay safe stay healthy wherever you are and love you okay bye, bye.